Welcome to the post-election meeting of the 31st Council of the City of Brisbane. I, Colin Jensen, as Chief Executive Officer, Brisbane City Council, am authorised under Section 25.2 of the Meetings Local Law 2001 to conduct and commence this meeting until the Chair of Council is appointed. May I especially welcome the newly elected councillors attending their first council meeting. Sarah Hutton, the councillor for Jamboree Ward, and Greg Adaman, the councillor for Pullendale Ward, as well, of course, as all re-elected councillors. I declare this meeting of council open and call upon the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor, to commence the meeting with the civic prayer and acknowledgement of country. Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Colin. Uh, can I ask all, all councillors to please stand for the prayer? Almighty God, we, the representatives of the citizens of the City of Brisbane, are assembled here to strive and care for the welfare of our city and its people. Lord, we ask that you guide us in the decisions we make today. Amen. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, and we pay our respects to elders past and present. Thank you. You may be seated. Councillors, I wish to report that in accordance with the Local Government Electoral Act 2001, uh, 2011, nominations for the position of Lord Mayor and for 26 ward councillors were called by the returning officer by notice of election for an election date of 22 Mar 28 March 2020. At the close of nominations at noon on Tuesday 3 March 2020, the number of nominees for each position exceeded the number of required. In accordance with the Act and the Local Government Electoral Regulation 2012, a poll was conducted on 28 March 2020. The Electoral Commissioner of Queensland has published the declarations of the polls on their website, confirming the conclusion of the election on Friday 17 April 2020, and the names of each candidate who has been duly elected. A copy of those results are tabled. They've been emailed to all councillors, as well as being available for all councillors to view in ASDEC Docs. The following candidates have been duly elected. Lord Mayor, Adrian Schrinner. Bracken Ridge Ward, Sandy Landers. Callumvale Ward, Angela Owen. Central Ward, Vicky Howard. Chandler Ward, Ryan Murphy. Cooperoo Ward, Fiona Cunningham. Deegan Ward, Jared Cassidy. Doughboy Ward, Lisa Atwood. Inogra Ward, Andrew Wines. Forest Lake Ward, Charles Strunk. Hamilton Ward, David McLaughlin. Holland Park Ward, Krista Adams. Jamboree Ward, Sarah Hutton. McGregor Ward, Stephen Huang. Marchant Ward, Fiona Hammond. McDowell Ward, Tracy Davis. Maruka Ward, Steve Griffiths. Morningside Ward, Cara Cook. Northgate Ward, Adam Allen. Paddington Ward, Peter Mattick. Pullenvale Ward, Greg Adaman. Runcone Ward, Kim Marks. Tennyson Ward, Nicole Johnston. The Gabba Ward, Jonathan Shrew. The Gap Ward, Steve Toomey. Walter Taylor Ward, James Mackay. Winner Manley Ward, Peter Cumming. Congratulations to you all. Agenda item two, the declarations of office. Uh, excuse Count me, Mr. Jensen. Point can of I order, start... Councillor Johnston. Yeah, uh, the, I can see 25 councillors. Uh, is everybody present? I can't, I can't, there's two councillors missing, I think. I'm just checking that we have everybody before we start. So, Councillor Owen, would you please turn your video on? Thank you, Councillor Johnston. I'll just pause a moment to make sure. And sorry, doing a head count again. Be right. 
Yes. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. Councillors, before taking your declarations of office, I wish to point out that I've already taken a declaration of office from the Lord Mayor. In accordance with the provisions of section 169 of the City of Brisbane Act 2010 and section 241 of the City of Brisbane Regulation 2012, I ask that all councillors other than the Lord Mayor make their declarations of office as per the forms of declaration distributed prior to the meeting and on the agenda. Councillors, please ensure that your microphones are on and prepare to give your declarations of office. I'll pause while that happens. Clark, if you could perhaps assist in ensuring all microphones are on. Can you please turn Councillor Hutton? Yep, working. Uh, Councillor Atwood, Councillor Huang. Councillor Griffiths. Councillor Griffiths. Councillor Hutton. Hutton still. Uh, Councillor Hutton and yep. Councillor Griffiths. Uh, yes. Councillor Hutton is that's correct. Yes. No. Councillor Griffiths. No. Clarks, are you able to assist? It's going well. Mm. Quality. Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. Uh, Councillor Hutton. Seems to be muted again. Yes. Okay, that's correct. Councillor Griffiths, you've turned your video off and your video is back on. The microphone is still muted. Someone give him a call. There you go. <laughs> no, I, I'm here. Okay, well, I can hear you, Councillor Griffiths. Thank you. Lord Mayor, if I, I keep check, losing connection. Sorry. Okay, so that's the delay. Thank you, Councillor Griffith. Lord Mayor? Yes. Okay, councillors, you appear all to be ready now. Thank you. So please prepare to give your declaration of office. It should be in front of you uh, and on the agenda. And I will ask you to all read it out aloud now. I judgment and ability. <laughs> Thank you, councillors. Congratulations to you all. If you perhaps could mute your microphones now. <laughs> Having done that, could you please sign the two declaration documents and they will then need to be returned to my office. I will then countersign them and have your copy returned to you. I'll give you a moment to do that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Point of Order, um, I can still yes, only Councilor see Johnston. 25 councillors on my screen. Um, so I'm just wondering, is there a way that we can see all councillors who are present in the meeting? Um, Councillor Johnston, there's two screens. You can toggle left and right using the arrows. Yes, but that means I can't see all councillors in the meeting. If you've got a full screen, you should be able to see everybody on one screen. 
far as I know, I've got a full screen. Um, I'm sorry, I'm unable to provide you technical assistance at this point. I believe it's at the top right of the screen is the icon that you should be using. Uh, but indeed, I have all councillors present on screen at the one time. Still only got 25. Plus, I've got non-video participants six or seven. Who are those people? So they're our clerks. Yep. Okay, I'll keep moving. Thank you, councillors. I do note, uh, uh, Councillor Griffiths, uh, you do drop in and out occasionally, but I did receive your oath of office. Thank yep. you. Uh, yep. No Councillors, are you. there any apologies? No, thank you. Councillors, the meeting's local law 2001 requires that the chair and deputy chair of council be elected at the first meeting of every new council. I now call for nominations for the position of chair of council. Lord I nominate Councillor Wines for the position of Chair of Council. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Councillors, are there any further nominations for the Chair of Council? Councillor Cassidy. Uh, thank you, CEO. I'd like to nominate Councillor Johnston for the position of Chair of Council. Thank you, Councillor Cassidy. Are there any further nominations for Chair of Council? Please indicate using your hand. No, thank you. I have the two nominations for uh, Chair of Council. Accordingly, under section 26.3 of the Meetings Local Law 2001, uh, it requires that councillors vote by their voices on the position. I will call for ayes and noes for each nominee until a nominee is uh, elected. Point of order. Yes, Councillor uh, Johnson, point of order. Yeah, thank you. Um, from memory, last time we did get the opportunity to speak and I would like to do so. Uh, there is not a provision to speak to the nomination. Well, aren't we moving a motion? We're actually uh, going through the nomination for the Chair of Council. Mm-hmm. I will call for ayes and noes for each nominee until the nominee is elected and then declare the successful candidate. We'll uh, proceed. Sorry, point of order, Mr. Jensen. Point if of we're order, Councillor Johnston. Yeah, if we're moving to elect a chairman or a deputy chairman, then I presume that is being done by motion. And normally we would have the opportunity uh, to speak, I would have thought. Uh, it is not the normal thing in the post-election meeting to have speakers to the nomination of chair of council. Moving then to vote for the first nominee. All those in favour of Councillor Wine's nomination, raise your hand and say aye and keep your hand raised while we do a vote. Thank you. Aye. 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 Thank you. You may lower your hands. All those voting no, please raise your hand and say no. 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 Please keep your hand raised so I can do a quick count. Thank you. Thank you. The motion to uh, the motion is carried. I declare Councillor Wines elected as the chair of council. Congratulations, Councillor. Would you please take the chair of the meeting? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, CEO. Thank you, councillors. Uh, I now call for nominations for the position of Deputy Chair of Council. Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Chair. I nominate Councillor Steve Toomey for the position of Deputy Chair of Council. I have a nomination for the position of Deputy Chair of Council for Stephen Toomey. Are there, are there further nominations? Seconded. Uh, Councillor I'd like, Johnston. I'd like to vote no if we get the chance, but I'm just not quite sure what you're going to do. 
Okay, well, that's not a nomination. Are there any further nominations? Uh, Councillor Shree. I'll nominate Councillor Nicole Johnston for Deputy Chair. I have a nomination for the position of Deputy Chair for Councillor Johnston. Uh, as two nominations have been received, Section 2610 of the Meetings Local Law 2001 requires that councillors vote by voices on the position. I will call for eyes and nose for each nominee until a nominee is elected and then declare the successful candidate. All those in favour of Councillor Toomey's nomination, please raise your hand and say aye and keep your hand raised. Aye. 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 Now, please lower your hands. And those against Councillor Toomey, please raise your hand and say no and keep your hand raised. No. 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 Please lower your hands. Uh, the motion in favour of Councillor Toomey is successful. Congratulations, Councillor Toomey. Councillors, the next item of business is the appointment of, of a councillor to be the Deputy Mayor, pursuant to Section 177.2 of the City of Brisbane Act 2010 and the Meetings Local Law 2001. I call for nominations for the position of Deputy Mayor. Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I nominate Councillor Krista Adams for the position of Deputy Mayor. I have a nomination for Councillor Krista Adams for Deputy Mayor. Further nominations? Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Landers. Further nominations, Councillor Shree. Thanks, I'd like to nominate Councillor Cara Cook for Deputy Mayor. I have a second nomination for <laughs> Councillor Cook for Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Johnston. As two, uh, are there further nominations? As two nominations have been received, section 2610 of the Meetings Local Law 2001 requires that councillors vote by voices on the position. I'll call for ayes and noes for each nominee until a nominee is elected and then declare the successful candidate. I'll begin with Councillor Adams. All those in favour of Councillor Adams' nomination, please raise your hand and say aye and keep aye. your hand raised. Aye. 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 That's definitely a no. <laughs> Point of order. Please lower your hands. Point of order, Mr Chair. Point of order, Councillor Cumming. I, I noticed, according to the screen, some uh, some of the uh, councillors in favour, they had their hands raised, but they had their mute button on, so you couldn't have heard their voices, so they, their vote shouldn't have been counted. <laughs> I appreciate uh, I appreciate what you're saying, but that's why we do two of All these right. things. That's why <laughs> we make you speak it and show us. Well, so that, that votes were appropriately recognised and recorded. I thought, you said, I thought you said that it had to be both the hand and the voice sort of thing. So, and they couldn't have, you couldn't have heard the voice if they were, had their uh, microphone muted. I just pointed out it's just a procedural matter. Thank now. you, Councillor Cunning. <laughs> As I say, uh, this is a really difficult way to conduct these things and we're trying our best. And the reason we'd ask you to do both is so that the, uh, the will of each councillor is properly identified and recorded. Uh, all those, excuse me, um, those against the nomination of Councillor Adams, please raise your hand and say no and keep your hand raised. No. 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 The motion to elect Councillor Adams, the Deputy Mayor, is successful. Congratulations, the Deputy Mayor. Uh, I now call upon the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor, to address the, the council, Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wines, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, and thank you to all of the uh, newly elected or re-elected councillors. Uh, clearly, uh, what we're experiencing right now are unusual circumstances uh, and quite a historic moment that we're uh, experiencing here with this Zoom meeting of council. Uh, having said that, uh, it is not much different to what every organisation is facing right now. Uh, and uh, having meetings like this, uh, having Zoom meetings uh, to continue the business of that organisation or the business of council uh, is something uh, that we should do. 
and something that is important uh, for us to continue uh, making sure council and its democracy and its decision making uh, can occur uh, in a democratic way that involves every single councillor. Now, there are obviously um, other levels of government that are considering uh, setting up a quorum system which would exclude some elected reps from the decision making process. Uh, I do believe it's really important that every councillor is involved in these council meetings. Uh, and while it is an unusual situation uh, to, to have a meeting like this, it is really important for the participation of all councillors. Uh, so I think uh, it is a good thing that we are doing uh, Zoom meetings for all councillors to be involved. Uh, and I want to thank you for your participation. Uh, first of all, congratulations to all of the elected and re-elected councillors. Uh, and in particular, um, thank you to uh, two of the new councillors that are joining us, Councillor Greg Adaman and Councillor Sarah Hutton. Uh, I'm very sure that both of you will have uh, very successful careers uh, representing the people of your local communities and I welcome you aboard uh, and thank you uh, and con congratulate you on your successful election. I also want to acknowledge the efforts of all of the Team Srinna candidates in the recent election. Uh, they work so hard and obviously uh, having the high watermark um, of the 2016 election in relation to uh, the number of seats held by the LNP. It was always going to be difficult to win additional seats, uh, but so many candidates across the city put in an incredible effort and so much hard work. And I want to thank each and every one of them um, for their active involvement in Team Schrinner and this campaign. Uh, and um, your contribution uh, will always be remembered. But on top of that, I also wanted to uh, pay tribute to every single candidate that ran in this election. Uh, it is so important for our democratic system that we have good competition. If you look across uh, the state, uh, there are a number of councils where councillors and mayors were elected unopposed. Uh, and um, I guess that's good, that's good work if you can get it. But ultimately, I think our system of government is healthier because of the democratic and robust nature of it. And the fact that we had so many candidates participating uh, in this election is a good thing uh, for our democracy. Uh, and it is part of the reason why uh, Brisbane has been so successful as a council uh, and is so well respected because we have such a healthy and robust democratic system. Uh, so whether you're a candidate for uh, a local ward or the Lord Meralty, I want to thank you for putting your hand up and thank you for your contribution to that process. Our colleagues, um, obviously this was a really interesting uh, election campaign. Um, there has never been a campaign like it in the history of Australian politics uh, and it was really quite extraordinary um, uh, to be involved in that. Um, and something that we will never forget, anyone that was involved in this campaign will never forget um, uh, this election, the 2020 local government election. And to have uh, you know, one of a kind situations where um, we didn't have volunteers handing out how to vote cards on election day, uh, and where even on pre-poll, um, the, uh, the interaction with voters was uh, significantly limited compared to uh, previous occur, uh, what would previously occur, uh, no shaking hands, no kissing babies, uh, and all of the normal things that you would imagine from a campaign. It is really quite extraordinary. And um, regardless of which side of the fence you sat on when it comes to the contest that we had, uh, I think it is really important to note that this, is, this was an historic election. What we did get, though, um, is a very clear result from the people of Brisbane. Um, and to have every single, uh, every single ward um, held by this administration returned to this administration in the, in the representation of this administration is quite an extraordinary yeah. thing. Uh, and also to have um, every sitting councillor um, on the other side re-elected as well um, is a credit to each and every one of us. Uh, so uh, all of you um, from different sides of the political fence. Um, congratulations on your re-election. Uh, what it is, is a message from the community uh, that experience and stability is important. It really is important. And obviously that was a key part of our uh, message to the people of Brisbane uh, going into this election, that experience matters. Uh, and quite clearly, the people of Brisbane agreed with that. Experience matters 
uh, and as a result, we have the return of uh, the experienced councillors serving in this chamber. Uh, and um, we all have a very important responsibility now going forward. Uh, each level of government at the moment is facing some incredible challenges uh, and council is no different. Uh, there will be significant impacts uh, on council's operation and council's budget uh, throughout this COVID-19 situation, uh, but um, the city is in safe hands under Team Schrinner and it is something we will work day and night to manage and something that we will use our responsibility, our experience uh, to make sure that we help guide our city through this challenging time. But more importantly, to come out the end of it stronger, to come out the end of it and rebound, uh, reboot uh, and kickstart our local economy uh, and to make sure that we can do our part as a government organisation uh, to be a critical part of that recovery effort. Obviously, uh, while there has been a return of Team Trina, there have been some, a number of changes uh, proposed to the leadership team. Um, and I want to particularly acknowledge the process of renewal and reinvigoration that's happened in Team Trina. I want to welcome um, Councillor Kim Marks, Councillor Ryan Murphy and Councillor Fiona Cunningham to Civic Cabinet. Obviously, that's a matter we're um, going to be dealing with shortly in this meeting. And I also want to pay tribute to Councillor Maddock and Councillor Hammond for their hard work and service to Team Schrinner in key leadership positions. Right from day one as Lord Mayor, uh, I made it clear that I'd be focused on the long term and I made it clear on day one that this administration would be an administration that looks to the future and have a vision for the future. And whether that is Brisbane Metro or building new bridges and upgrading roads uh, or massive new investment in parks and green space, mm. double-decker city cats or the Victoria Park vision, just to name a few, uh, right from day one, we have focused on those things that will make a difference in the long term from our, for our city. But obviously, going forward in the short term and even the medium term, uh, there will be significant challenges that I touched on before. Uh, the economic and financial challenges uh, that COVID has presented us are still unknown. Uh, we do not know uh, the exact impact that it will have on council and its budget and its operating, uh, but we know that it will be serious. And we know that this is a challenge being faced by all levels of government. Uh, having said that, uh, we did get through the 2011 floods. Uh, we did get through multiple natural disasters. We did get through uh, the global financial crisis uh, in the mid to late 2000s. Uh, and I am confident we will get through this situation that we're in. Uh, and we will get through that uh, by all working together, uh, by contributing as a team. Uh, and I want to say to each and every councillor, I want to make this offer. If you are willing to be part of the solution, your contributions will be welcomed. Uh, if you are willing to tackle issues in a genuinely non-partisan way, uh, then that will be appreciated and welcomed. It doesn't mean that we will always agree. Uh, it doesn't mean that you'll always get your ideas up or your preferred pathway up, uh, but it does mean that every councillor here has an important role to play, and I understand and appreciate that role. I also know that um, we have an exciting time when it comes to um, the renewal of Team Schrinner and the contribution of uh, those three uh, people that I mentioned that are coming into Civic Cabinet. Um, Councillor Marks, uh, Councillor Ryan Murphy and also Councillor Fiona Cunningham. And I'm very much looking forward to working uh, with the three of you as well as the other members of Civic Cabinet to take uh, a leadership role in dealing with this challenge. Ultimately, while we've got this short-term uh, situation or medium-term situation, the the uh, prospect for Brisbane is bright. Uh, we are a city uh, that will rebound. Uh, we, are, we are Brisbane residents and Queenslanders that have faced adversity before. And whenever that adversity has come, uh, we have risen and stepped up uh, and worked together to make sure we get through any challenge that, ar that arises. And I know we will do that as a team. I know we will do that as a council. And importantly, I know we will do that as a community. Lord Mayor, your time has expired. Thank you.
Yeah, uh, point of order, Councillor Wines, your microphone's not on. Excuse me. I now call upon the Leader of the Opposition to address the Council, Councillor Cassidy. Thanks very much, Chair. Um, first of all, my congratulations to the Lord Mayor and his team, to my Labor colleagues and to the councillors for Tennyson uh, and Wollongabba on your election to this place. Uh, in terms of the global upheaval brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, it would be simplistic to downplay the relevance of a re-elected Brisbane City Council. But our impact on the day-to-day -day lives of this city's 1.2 million residents has rarely been as important as it will be in the coming months. We have been entrusted by the people of Brisbane to ensure that when we do finally re-emerge from this pandemic, we're on a path that takes us back to prosperity. Obviously, the task at hand for all councillors is to do everything we can to ease the pain of the pandemic for Brisbane. Uh, we have a heightened duty of care to our staff, particularly frontline workers on the buses, ferries and city cats, and our teams out across the city. We must be prepared to innovate and find solutions to situations we have never encountered before. We've all had some very busy months and owe so many thanks to so many people. On behalf of my colleagues, I would like to start by sending our very best wishes to Labor's Lord Mayoral candidate, Patrick Condren, and wish him, Margaret, and their family a very happy and healthy future. I worked closely with Patrick over recent months and never ceased to be impressed by his energy, ideas, his calmness, and his kindness. My sincere thanks also to my Labor colleagues, not just for the hard work they've put in over the past term, but for their enthusiasm to get on with the job ahead. To each and every unsuccessful Labor candidate, I say thank you. Your commitment and dedication to our party and your community has not gone unnoticed. The simple fact that LNP wards that previously had margins close to 20% now just have a few hundred votes difference is testament to that. This will be a positive Labor team that continues to develop policy driven by the people of Brisbane. Residents are becoming more engaged and rightly demanding a say in the future of their city. Nowhere is this more evident than in planning, where they want to help shape their neighbourhoods, not just be told what they're going to get. They want their council to focus on public transport that better suits their needs, and they're telling us to work constructively with the state government to make it a reality. They want more encouragement to get out of their cars and onto their bikes. Multi-million dollar bikeways are to be applauded, but they mustn't come at the expense of the small suburban links uh, the missing links that mean the difference between taking the car or leaving it in the garage. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity to start work on this right now, like cities all around the world are doing during the coronavirus lockdown. We'll explore innovative ways to support the arts and entertainment industry, one of the workforces being hit hardest during the pandemic and one receiving the least support from the federal government at the moment. While casual venue staff have lost their work and local acts have lost their gigs, now more than ever, we need to do everything we can to ensure this industry stays afloat and begins to flourish once we emerge from this crisis. Something that makes our suburbs so vibrant and engaging are the small venues and bars that have been popping up over the last few years, supporting new and unique acts. We have to be vigilant, we don't lose them for good. Brisbane's youth are also in need of support. Many of them working casually or part-time have lost their jobs and are now studying from home. Their beloved local sports clubs that they grew up playing for are struggling to pay the bills. And as I mentioned, their local entertainment venues and bands are doing it tough as well. We need to support these sports clubs, local venues, schools, universities and industries to keep the next generation on track to become the leaders of this, uh, leaders of the future we so desperately need. More than anything, Labor will use the years ahead to contribute to shaping a city where no one is left behind. Residents want their council to be more compassionate to our fellow residents who have nowhere to live. Never has this been more pressing, with COVID-19 doubling unemployment overnight and the inevitable flow-ons that are yet to take full effect. This is another area where cooperation is key. We must mesh with the state and federal governments to ensure every precious dollar is being spent as effectively and efficiently as possible. Lives are at stake and there, are no, there is no room for politics in this. And while we offer the Lord Mayor bipartisan support to get through and beyond COVID-19, we won't step back from our role of holding this administration to account on behalf of the people of Brisbane and the staff that this council employs. We'll continue to call out rorts like the cab charge affair and the Qantas club memberships whenever we see them. We'll fight for the rights of our workforce. 
will continue to call on council to find ways of funding the coronavirus response through cutting waste ahead of cutting wages. We'll listen to the people of Brisbane and be their voice. People like residents in Brisbane's outer suburbs who look on bewildered at inner city extravaganzas like the Kingston Smith Drive project when they can't even get a library for their suburb and their footpaths are crying out to be fixed. Labor's strong showing in the wards of Brisbane's outer ring, places like Callumvale, Brackenridge, Forest Lake, Maruka, and my own water dig and underlines the frustrations of increasing numbers of residents who feel they're becoming the forgotten fringe dwellers under the LNP. We'll continue to hold the administration to account for how public money is spent. In the previous term, we saw $27 million of ratepayers' hard-earned money squandered on a bungled IT scheme. We lost contingencies of well over $50 million on Kingston Smith Drive. At the same time, footpaths weren't getting fixed, road upgrades languished for years, and even barbecues in parks started to disappear. We've seen how putting PR before planning has caused a $200 million blowout on the Metro already. Why are these major projects done back to front? Why don't we follow proper planning processes like feasibility studies to ensure ratepayers' money is spent more wisely? We must look beyond the nightly news before we charge headlong into these massive commitments of public funds. Given this administration's track record, the people of Brisbane will be anxiously watching the development of the five proposed green bridges. We will be their eyes every step of the way in this place. We will continue to be proactive in our approach to public policy here in Brisbane through the current crisis and take a genuine bipartisan approach, whether that be through waste management, ongoing and in some cases permanent small business support and rates relief uh, for those doing it tough. No one has a monopoly on good ideas, as the Lord Mayor has already said. Uh, finally, Chair, we have all been awarded a tremendous responsibility to ensure we listen to every Brisbane resident, no matter where they live or how they vote. I know all councillors will join me today in pledging to use every resource of this mighty organisation to weather the pandemic storm and re-emerge raring and ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Cassidy. Uh, Lord Mayor, in accordance with Section 4 of the Meetings Local Law 2001, may I have a motion for the fixing of the day and time for the first ordinary council meeting, please? Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I move that the first ordinary meeting of council be held on Tuesday, the 5th of May, 2020 at 2pm, and the date, that the date of future ordinary meetings of council be decided at that meeting. Seconded. Sorry, I just, can I, so who I seconded, say that again for me, please? Seconded, Councillor Thank you, Landers. Councillor Landers. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the first ordinary meeting of this council be held on Tuesday, the 5th of May, 2020 at 2 p.m. and that the date of future ordinary meetings of council be decided at that meeting. Is there any debate? Lord Mayor. No. Further speakers? Yes. Councillor Johnston. I definitely would like to speak. Um, uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak on the motion for the commencement of ordinary council meetings. Um, given the extraordinary times that we find ourselves in, I'm really quite surprised that we're not having an ordinary meeting um, next week. Um, to wait another two weeks seems to be very odd to me. Um, the Lord Mayor has indicated that he's pressing ahead with the council budget, um, even though the state and the federal government um, have held off on their budgets. Uh, so I, I find it extremely odd that we are not pushing to have an ordinary council meeting as soon as possible uh, to cover off on outstanding matters, including a number of outstanding petitions for our local areas, which are important local infrastructure upgrades that I know my community is waiting on. Uh, and certainly um, I would have thought that uh, given how serious the current circumstances are around COVID-19, that we should be meeting as a council as soon as possible uh, to discuss uh, urgent city business. And I'm, I'm very disappointed that it's going to be another two weeks um, after all the expense and effort that we've gone to to get people online, um, that it's another two weeks before we're even going to have an ordinary meeting. Uh, so um, I don't support uh, the motion as it's been put forward. Uh, I believe we should be meeting uh, next Tuesday and the business of this city should be uh, going point ahead as soon as possible. Point of order. Sorry, Councillor point Cumming. of order. Councillor Cumming. Point of order to you, anything. Councillor Cumming. But, What are you? Is that your point of order? That's you okay. can't hear. 
Hello? Thanks for coming. My microphone's on and... Forget the point of order. All right. Councillor Johnson, please continue. Well, I'm just a little bit concerned that Councillor Cummings can't hear us. Is that, or I can't speak, is that the, the problem? <laughs> he didn't make that clear. Please continue your presentation. Well, I would like to, but as you know and others know, I'm very concerned that people are being disenfranchised by this process. And if Councillor Cumming can't hear what we're saying, um, then I would think that is of concern to everybody in the meeting um, because we're having a, yeah, and we're having a, a debate about when the council meeting is going to start. So um, I, I'm very concerned. This is another reason we should be meeting in person um, as soon as possible. Um, I believe it should be next Tuesday. Um, I note whilst we were all given instructions that the council chamber was unsafe, um, Councillor Wines, you as the chair of council are sitting in the council chamber. I guess it's not unsafe for some people. Um, but uh, uh, given the current situation with the, uh, the virus, the a large amount of outstanding business from last term, we should be meeting as soon as possible. And I hope someone can assist Councillor Cummings to fix uh, the technical problems. Further speakers? Anyone at all? Lord Mayor, would you like to respond? Lord Mayor? Councillor Shree's got his hand up, Councillor Wines. Uh, well, Councillor Shree uh, raised his hand after I'd called the Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, um, Councillor. Point of order, Chair. Point of order to you, Councillor Shree. I'd just like to note that there is a slight delay in terms of sound travelling, right? So maybe you need to allow a little bit more time. Okay. No, look, look, I am, as you know, Councillor Shree, I'm always try, I always try um, to accommodate everybody as best I can. And Lord Mayor, we are trying to have this meeting. Um, this meeting is very unusual and I apologise, but would you have an objection if I allowed Councillor Shree to speak now? No, no objection. Councillor Shree, please speak. Please uh, commence your presentation. Thanks, Chair. I'll just keep it quite brief, which is just to offer the suggestion to the administration councillors that we consider a slightly earlier start time for online meetings for council in this session and that, that the start time can be amended down the track. I think there's quite a few benefits to start, starting slightly earlier in the day. And given that we're all online, it shouldn't be too much of an imposition on people. So I won't labour the point, but I'd just like to encourage the Lord Mayor to consider an earlier start time. So obviously we can start at 2pm for the first meeting, but you might want to look at the daily schedule and consider a slightly earlier to start time so that we can also finish meetings slightly earlier. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, are, there, are there any further speakers? Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wines. Obviously, uh, one of the reasons why um, we have had uh, a delay to getting together is um, the amount of time taken to resolve the election um, and the uh, extraordinary um, counting process that has taken longer than any of us would have liked. Um, but it is resolved now and the uh, timetable going forward is very much determined by um, the normal meeting schedule that we would have. Um, so cabinet uh, will be meeting shortly uh, and then we will continue to have, uh, as we always do, um, ongoing regular meetings of council. Uh, we anticipate to have um, council meetings in the way that they've always been held, just by this environment. So uh, they will start at 2 p.m. and they will go for as long as they need to go uh, to uh, deal with the business of the meeting. And um, uh, so that is, is quite, uh, normal uh, and uh, the only difference is the fact that we're doing it in this online environment. So I would simply say um, uh, to Councillor Johnson and others um, there will be plenty of opportunity uh, for involvement in the decisions that are made by this council uh, as there always is, as there always is. Um, and so uh, we will continue to go forward in the way that we've always gone which is uh, to bring important business through to each council meeting uh, and um, in the meantime, that work on the budget that was referred to will continue uh, and all councillors will get an opportunity to be involved in that budget process as well, whether it's um, their budget submissions, which each councillor uh, has the opportunity to provide, uh, or whether it's the budget debate, uh, which happens each year 
uh, in the lead up to the start of the new financial year. So all those things will continue uh, in the normal way. Um, and that is appropriate in this situation. Uh, we're just simply doing it uh, in a different environment than we normally would be. Uh, finally, I would suggest that um, uh, the comment about uh, the council chair being in the council chamber, um, it is, it would only be unsafe for him to be in the chamber if all councillors were in the chamber. Uh, because uh, social distancing requirements imposed by other levels of government. That's just not true. Uh, it is not possible to have all councillors in the chamber and is not responsible given that we are asking others to socially distance. Uh, and so while Councillor Wines is in the chamber with a limited number of people, it is entirely safe. Uh, having said that, it would not be a safe environment for all councillors to be in and we'd be breaching social distancing rules. Uh, I think I'll leave my comments at that. I will now put the resolution. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 And to the contrary, no. Please lower your hands now. To the contrary, no. Uh, please no. say no and raise your hand. <coughs> no. The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, Lord Mayor, the names and responsibilities of standing committees, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that the council standing committees be named as follows. The Establishment and Coordination Committee, otherwise known as Civic Cabinet, uh, the City Planning and Economic Development Committee, the City Standards, Community Health and Safety Committee, the Community Arts and Nighttime Economy Committee, Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee, Finance, Administration and Small Business Committee, Infrastructure Committee and Public and Active Transport Committee. And that the responsibility, the, the responsibilities of these committees, other than the Establishment and Coordination Committee, be set out as in the scheduled table, uh, which has been emailed to all councillors, as well as being available for all councillors to view in ASDEC docs. Is there a second? Councillor Landers is so seconding. I've, uh, it has been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the council standing committees be named as follows. The Establishment and Coordination Committee, the City Planning and Economic Development Committee, the City Standards, Community Health and Safety Committee, Community Arts and Nighttime Economy Committee, Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee, Finance, Administration and Small Business Committee, uh, Infrastructure Committee, Public and Active Transport Committee, and that the responsibilities of the committees other than the Establishment and Coordination Committees be as set out in the schedule table, which has been emailed to all councillors, as well as been available for all councillors to view in ASDEC docs. Lord Mayor, is there any debate? The Lord Mayor. Are there any further councillors to the resolution? Councillor Johnston. Uh, yes, just briefly. Um, I would like to uh, note it for the record that this is, I think, uh, from memory, the third time in the one year that the Lord Mayor has been uh, the Lord Mayor of Brisbane um, that the names of the committees have changed again. Um, in my view, it's unnecessary. Um, it's, it's like some sort of fad with the LNP administration um, uh, to change the names of the committees. And I note we have another odd one uh, in the uh, suggestion list put forward to us today. Um, apparently, the nighttime economy um, uh, is uh, now a uh, committee, but that, that doesn't include small business, which has its own committee, uh, doesn't include economic development, which has its own committee. So I, I just think the game playing that's going on with the um, names of the committees is unnecessary. Um, uh, the afternoon economy in Brisbane is important. The morning economy in Brisbane is even more important, I would suggest, to a lot of Brisbane residents who like to hop up, walk, get a cup of tea, have breakfast um, and uh, get out in their community. So I, I just want to express my concern um, at the uh, way in which um, the LNP administration continues to play games with the names of committees in Brisbane City Council. Uh, further speakers? Councillor Shree. Thanks, Chair. Also, just briefly speaking to the uh, shift in responsibilities of the committees, I, I think there's nothing particularly wrong with changing the names of committees from time to time, and I don't take issue with that. But I do want to, again, reiterate my ongoing concerns about the odd division of responsibilities between committees. 
in particular the separation between the infrastructure committee and the public and active transport committee places the these two committees that frequently places these two committees at odds where the infrastructure committee is often making decisions about intersection upgrades road widening projects etc et while the public and active transport committee is making decisions about pedestrian access bike lanes etc and the split focus between these two committees causes a lot of behind the scenes issues for councillors for public servants there's often a, a situation where the even the council officers themselves aren't 100 percent sure which chair has oversight over certain questions um and the i think that division of responsibilities needs to be reconsidered in in particular if we are to genuinely commit to supporting public and active transport but the money is still allocated through the infrastructure committee and those big decisions about what projects are prioritized are made by the infrastructure committee i think there's a real concern there that um those important needs like pedestrian access and bike claims will continue to be overlooked and this has been a frustration of mine for a couple of years now and I, i'm concerned that we're continuing to replicate that problem a, a really simple practical example is that often a new intersection project will be conceptualized and approved under the auspices of the infrastructure committee and it's only later through lobbying and um, a, a lot of extra unnecessary work that the design of that infra that intersection upgrade will remember to include space for bike lanes for example and so i just want to reiterate my concerns about that also a little bit perplexed at the decision to separate economic development from the finance and small business committee um, i'm particularly concerned because combining economic development with city planning is going to split the focus of city planning that committee often runs out of time we often find that there's more to be discussed that we don't have time to get onto. And I'm worried that if the city planning committee is now also taking responsibility for a lot of those economic development portfolio issues, we're gonna be overlooking important questions about development approvals and neighborhood planning processes and create a situation where we're not paying enough attention to city planning and, and urban planning issues because we're continually getting presentations on other tangentially related projects. So. Just want to note my concerns there again that i don't think we should be putting economic development into the city planning portfolio it should be much more closely aligned with small business and finance that's me thank you further speakers uh, there being none the lord mayor i will now put the resolution uh, all those in favor suggestions on board all those in favor please say aye and raise your hand Aye. 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 Thank you. Please lower your hand. Please lower your hands. Uh, now those uh, against, please say no and raise your hand. No. Thank no. you. Please lower your hands. The ayes have it. Uh, Lord Mayor may I have a motion about the powers delegated to the standing committees under section 238 of the City of Brisbane Act 2010, please. Uh, yes, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I move that the standing committees, with the exception of the Establishment and Coordination Committee, be delegated the powers as set out in the schedule table uh, in accordance with section 238 of the City of Brisbane Act 2010. A second, to please. Councillor Landers. It has been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the committees, with the exception of the Establishment and Coordination Committee, be delegated the powers as set out in the schedule tabled in accordance with Section 238 of the City of Brisbane Act 2010. Is there any debate, Lord Mayor? All right, further debate? Anyone? Councillor Johnston. Yes, thank you. Just on the powers, um, I would just like to indicate, I, I think uh, Councillor Shree made some extremely good points um, about uh, uh, the City Planning um, Committee. Um, I've, I've never had the opportunity to be on that committee, um, but obviously development issues are of um, huge concern uh, to the residents of the City of Brisbane. I think that was extremely clear uh, throughout the election as well and certainly over the last few years they're not happy with the way the LMP is running uh, town planning and development in our city um, and 
I certainly would agree with Councillor Shree um, that splitting the focus of that committee, um, it seems to be a very deliberate move um, in my view, um, which is to obfuscate around um, planning, uh, to run interference. Yes, and Councillor Adams is smiling away. Um, so it's to run interference and um, I too fear that there won't be enough time in that committee to fully discuss planning matters. Um, I note the Lord Mayor you've made, well, through you, Mr Chairman, the Lord Mayor's made a number of comments today that he'd take good ideas on board. Um, uh, certainly, we haven't had the opportunity to provide feedback about the names of the committees. Um, and I do believe Councillor Shree is raising an extremely good point, And I would um, ask that you take it into account, perhaps explain to us and the residents of Brisbane um, why you have decided um, that planning um, should uh, be split. Um, so that there is not now enough time or won't be enough time to discuss planning matters uh, in detail uh, in the committee. And uh, that is, I agree with Councillor Tree, a big issue. Further speakers? Councillor Shree. Thanks, Chair. Just expanding a little bit on the powers and functions of the various committees, I'm quite supportive of the proposal to um, align the community and arts portfolio more closely with the nighttime economy. I do see the logic of of that, but I'm just noting in the description of the responsibilities, there's explicit mention of Fortitude Valley and Cent Central Business District as key precincts in terms of the nighttime economy. And I wanted to place on the radar and draw to the attention of the relevant chair that the South Bank and West End precincts are also now emerging as key precincts in terms of the nighttime economy. And obviously the de definition of responsibilities isn't exhaustive, but the fact that we continue to focus on Fortitude Valley to exclusion to the exclusion of precincts like Boundary Street and West End probably needs to be reevaluated, and the chair of that relevant committee and the committee members need to be mindful of the fact that West End has been a hub of live music and the performing arts for a long time now, and is, is evolving and and growing still as a precinct that's quite important to the nighttime economy and needs to be given the same level of attention that we give to other nighttime precincts in, in and around the city. And I just want to make sure that that doesn't fall off the radar. Um, my concerns about the, the other committees and the split of portfolios um, remain. I also have some concerns about the powers, functions and duties of the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee. I don't think they're clearly defined enough and I think that they're, uh, I think, far too vague and unambitious in terms of the, what they identify as implied goals, but I don't want to harp on about that now. Just want to note for the record that I don't support those descriptions. Further speakers? Anyone? The Lord Mayor. Right, I'll now put the resolution. All those in favour, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Thank you. And please lower your hands. And those against, please raise your hand and say no. 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 Thank you. Please lower your hands. Uh, Lord Mayor, fixing committee meeting times, please. Thank you, Mr Chair. I move that the first meetings of the standing committees, with the exception of the Establishment and Coordination Committee, uh, be held on Tuesday the 5th of May 2020 at the following times uh, and places. Uh, the City Planning and Economic Development Committee uh, be 10 a.m. Point of order. Point of order, Councillor Johnston. Yes, yeah, sorry, we have not been given um, a list of all of these um, uh, committee meeting times and places. Um, is that possible to be emailed through, please? Uh, normally, I... normally it would be handed around the chamber and we haven't been given either a copy of the committee meeting times, places, nor have we been given a list of people who are proposed to be appointed to the committee. So these motions you're asking us to consider now, we've not actually seen any um, details of. Uh, thank you, Councillor Johnston. Um, I understand it would be... Excuse me one moment. Thank you. 
Uh, Councillor Johnston, the times and locations are uh, the standard times and locations with a, with a very minor alteration uh, that we would typically meet um, outside of these COVID-19 circumstances. So um, they are the, the committees that we've just voted on and they're the times that we would typically meet. So I appreciate that it's not been circulated, but I've been uh, advised that it will be circulated very, very soon. Well, well, Mr Chairman, um, again, with all of the bits of paper that we got sent last night at like 5.30, one of those bits of paper says the times of the committees are actually changing. So I don't think it is unreasonable if a motion is being put to us as, as members of council that we're given a copy of it so we know what it is that we're going to be voting on. I understand that, uh, but also um, I have the, the change is not, in my view, um, I think that the change is beneficial uh, and I think that councillors will appreciate it. And it, again, it is the same location and roughly the same time. And Point of order, I understand Jeff. what you're saying. However, I think it's important that we, uh, we must progress the resolution Yes, However, as I said, as I said, no, hang on, let me finish. Let me finish, please. However, as I said, this information is being circulated um, as soon as practicable, all right? So I've, I've spoken to some people and we're going to try and get it to you. But uh, Point of order, gonna, Chair? Point of order, Councillor Shree. So can you just clarify, are you going to email those times and locations out to us now because they are materially different given that there's a 15-minute buffer between each committee time? I appreciate that and that's why, uh, no, I won't be personally emailing it because I'll be chairing this meeting. Uh, however, some people have indicated that they'll be attempting to get that information to you as quickly as they can, all right? Uh, Lord Mayor. Well, point of order then, um, we should wait until we have sorry. the... Point of order, Councillor Johnston. Thank you, Mr Chair. I think we should wait until we have the information. And just flagging again, the next motion is who's being appointed to committees. And I have no idea because I've not been sent that information either. So I don't know if other councillors have, but I certainly haven't been. So perhaps it's timely now to make sure we all have the information we need to consider these motions. Mr Chair, I was actually just about to provide that information. So if councillors are interested in that information... Sorry, I, sorry Lord I Mayor, I think what we'll do, I'm just getting... I apologise. There's a lot of things that the people can't see. And if, if I can just have two seconds, I will attempt to answer the question. However, um, I, I, want to, I want to answer this, but also I want to get the business of the council moving as quickly as possible. So just, may I please have just a very small moment? Uh, thank you. Now, I uh, have been advised that the times and dates of committee meetings is typically advised at this meeting and that this is, uh, that this, that the Lord Mayor is about to provide the information to you all and to all of us at the same time. So, Lord Mayor, please continue. Point of order, Mr Chairman. Normally... Yes, point of order, Councillor Johnston. Yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. Normally, it is provided to us in the chamber. That's the problem, not in the chamber, and therefore you're proposing not to give it to us at all. So uh, I, I, we were told that things well, would hang be... Hang on, hang on. No, no, no. No, I'm not proposing not to give it to you at all. In fact, if you are patient, you'll have all the information you need in about 45 seconds. And that's that's kind of the point I'm making. And typically, no, they're not circulated or tabled at this meeting. And and I think that I think it's important that that the matter uh, before us is considered and that this council meeting continue to consider the business uh, that it needs to consider. Lord Mayor, please continue. Uh, yes, uh, so the City Planning and Economic Development Committee meeting would meet between 10 a.m. and 10.30 a.m., normally in meeting room two, uh, but obviously uh, via um, an online arrangement in the meantime. City Standards, Community Health and Safety Committee, uh, would be meeting from 11.30 a.m. to 12 noon, uh, normally in meeting room two. Uh, the Community Arts and Nighttime Economy Committee would be meeting uh, from 10.45 a.m. to 11.15 a.m., uh, normally in meeting room one. The Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee uh, would be meeting in uh, from 10 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. in meeting room one. The Finance, Administration and Small Business Committee 
uh, would be meeting from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. in meeting room one normally. The infrastructure committee would be meeting from 9.15 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. normally in meeting room one. And the public and active transport committee would be meeting from 9.15 a.m. Uh, to 9.45 a.m. in meeting room two. Uh, so councillors will notice uh, some slight changes to accommodate an, an additional buffer time between committee meetings, which was a suggestion raised, uh, I believe, by Councillor Shree. Um, and so that's been incorporated into the timing uh, just to deal with the online environment that we're in at the moment. Can I have a seconder for that resolution, please? Point of order. A point of order, Councillor Cassidy. Oh, hang on, can I get a, I'll get a seconder first and I'll get a point of order. Can I have a seconder for that resolution, please? Councillor Landers. Uh, I'll, now, it's, uh, I'll now have the point of order, Councillor Cassidy. Yeah, thanks. Will you be reading that back, please? I just missed a couple of those times, thanks. Well, you'd like me to read it to you? Voting on that, yeah. Okay, well, I will read it to you as part of the resolution as well. I'd like so, to send it to us. So, all right. Uh, it's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the meeting, that the first meetings of the standing committees, with the exception of the Establishment and Coordination Committee, be as stated in the Lord Mayor's motion. Councillor Landers. Uh, they are City Planning and Economic Development, 10 till 10.30, meeting room two. City Standards, Community Health and Safety, 11.30 to 12, meeting room two. Community Arts and Nighttime Economy, 10.45 to 11.15, meeting room one. Environment, Parks and Sustainability, 10 a.m. till 10.30, meeting room one. Finance, Administration and Small Business, 8.30 a.m. till nine, meeting room one. Infrastructure, 9.15 to 9.45, meeting room one. And Public and Active Transport, 9.15 to 9.45, meeting room two. Is there any debate? Uh, Councillor Johnston. Uh, Lord Mayor? Uh, no. Uh, Councillor Johnston. Yes. Just so everybody in Brisbane knows what a farce this was, if that had been emailed to us in advance, none of this needed to happen. Um, for the efficiency of these meetings, Lord Mayor, you have indicated, through you, Mr Chairman, the Lord Mayor has indicated he's happy to consult with us. He wants to work with us, um, that he's open to suggestions. My suggestion is if you want to move a motion in the council, please send it to the councillors who have to vote on it in advance. Uh, further speakers? Councillor Shree. Thanks, Chair. I just want to reiterate my concerns that the median times allowed for these committee meetings are far too short. It's rather ridiculous when you think about it that the committee, which is ostensibly responsible for city planning for an entire city the size of Brisbane, is only meeting half an hour a week. And it, in my experience now as a councillor for four years, it is quite common that we run out of time to discuss important issues. As a result, those issues and those decisions are made behind closed doors by the chair of the committee in consultation with public servants, but without any clear democratic accountability. This is a broader systemic problem in the way this council operates, where there's the, the, the standing committees are not actually functional decision-making bodies. They are simply rubber stamping bodies for decisions that have been made behind the scenes by the chair without a proper democratic process. If the mayor wants to genuinely work collaboratively across party lines and build trust, the thing to do would be to allow more time for those meetings so that we can get into the nuts and bolts of decisions and why they're being made. For example, there are frequently misunderstandings about individual pro projects. I see this in the Public and Active Transport Committee. I've seen this while observing the Infrastructure Committee where councillors haven't had enough time and hadn't had, have had, haven't had detailed briefings about projects. And so then they go out into the public realm and they oppose those projects publicly. They cause more concern, they cause division within the community. And that's because the administration hasn't allowed the time to explain its strategy and explain its approach during those committee meetings. So if you had longer committee meetings that allowed more time to get into the detail of some of these decisions, you would actually save time in the long term because you wouldn't have that much division out in the public realm. The same is true for city planning, the same is true for a number of the portfolios. If administration councillors are feeling frustrated that sometimes opposition councillors and councillors like myself are so publicly critical of ideas 
which you believe to be good ideas and which you believe should have unanimous support, maybe a solution would be to allow more time in the meetings to actually explain and justify those issues so that they don't have to be debated through other channels such as the media. I'm quite happy to meet for longer. I'm quite happy to allocate more time in my week for longer committee meetings so we can actually have robust discussions about transport strategy, so we can have robust discussions about city planning and our vision for the city. And I think quite a few other councillors are willing to have longer meetings as well. So the idea that we are condensing so many important decisions into such small time slots, which also denies members of the public a meaningful opportunity to engage with those issues, is very undemocratic. It's not transparent. And it creates a situation where, as I said, practical decisions are being made behind closed doors without democratic accountability. So I, I remain very concerned about this. I'm disappointed to see that this hasn't changed with the new um, term of council. I had hoped that there would be longer committee meetings so that we could actually get into the nuts and bolts of decisions. And the fact that that hasn't happened reinforces my concerns that the committee meetings are just going to be rubber stamping bodies for decisions that have been made elsewhere. So I'm very disappointed to see that those times haven't been extended. I'm grateful quite genuinely to the mayor for at least allowing the 15 minute buffer. And I acknowledge that that's a, that's a shift. And I'm, I'm, I think that's a good one that I hope will stick around even beyond the shutdown and beyond the video conferencing meetings. But in general, I think we need more time for these committee meetings and certainly for things like city planning and public and active transport. 30 minutes a week is not enough time to be discussing all the important issues that we should be considering as democratically elected representatives of this city. Further speakers? Lord Mayor? Uh, yes, in just in response to Councillor Shree's comments, um, look, I, I believe that is a complete misrepresentation of the truth and the reality uh, because what we have here is a situation where Councillor Shree claimed that there was no democratic accountability uh, but in reality what he means is if he disagrees with the decision um, then he claims there's no democratic accountability. The reality is any decision that comes through uh, either civic cabinet or um, uh, a committee uh, will also be reported um, to councillors. And so it's reported to councillors and it's reported in the council chamber for unlimited debate. And so the suggestion that somehow uh, a decision is made without appropriate accountability or the opportunity to debate is simply untrue. And I do recall Councillor Shree earlier suggesting that we should change the time of a council meeting so we could finish up earlier. The reality is council meetings go for as chair. long as they need point to go. Order, Jonathan, uh, Councillor Shree, Claim to be misrepresented. Noted, Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you. Council meetings go as long as they need to go to deal with the business of the day. And that is the ultimate democratic test when it comes to council being uh, signing off on everything. No nothing can occur in this place uh, without either the sign off of council or the delegation of council, which is given through a council approval. All of those things go to council for debate. And that debate is unlimited in length. So people can, uh, every single councillor can speak on uh, every single item if they wish to. Um, and so there is full accountability. Uh, there is full uh, opportunity for people to participate democratically. Uh, and Councillor uh, Shri is simply um, pushing a political line here uh, to suggest inappropriately and inaccurately uh, that that doesn't occur. The reality is uh, we are the most democratic council in Australia uh, of the hundreds and hundreds of councils all around the country. We are the most democratic and the most robust. Uh, and long may it be the case, but to suggest otherwise is a complete misrepresentation of the facts. Uh, so uh, I would simply say what we're doing here um, is not getting into wider debates. We're simply setting uh, the times and locations of committee meetings, which ultimately then have further reporting requirements. Uh, and those further reporting requirements involve coming through to council uh, for approval. And there's, as I said before, there's unlimited opportunity to debate in council. Councillor Shree, you had a misrepresentation, please. And as it's, uh, we haven't met for a little while, but I, so I feel the need to say it, please limit your comments to misrepresentation and don't use it as an opportunity to relitigate your argument. Councillor Shree. Thanks, Chair. I'll keep it brief. The Lord Mayor misstated and mischaracterised the justifications I offered for changing 
time meetings, both for the standing committees and for the full meetings of council. And I don't think his characterization was accurate or fair. Thank you. I will now put the resolution. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Thank you. And to those against, please raise your hand and say no. No. Yep, the eyes have it. Yep, thank you. Uh, all right. Lord Mayor, uh, I will now call for a resolution for the first meeting of the Establishment and Coordination Committee, please. Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I move that the first meeting of the Establishment and Coordination Committee meeting be held on Monday, 27th of April, 2020, uh, at 10am. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the first meeting of the Establishment and Coordination Committee be held on Monday, the 27th of April, 2020, at 10 a.m. Is there any debate? Lord Mayor. Further speakers. Councillor Johnston. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I know before that the Lord Mayor said uh, that this was all being done in the same way as it's been done previously, and that is absolutely completely untrue. I have the 2016 uh, Council and Committee meeting calendar in front of me, and Council actually sat for three meetings in April, um, uh, including the post-election meeting and then two ordinary meetings um, in the month yeah, of no, thank, April. Thanks, Councillor Johnson. Um, but what is it, can I bring you back to the substantive motion? Yes. Um, yes whether yes. ENC should meet on Monday or not? Yes, I think ENC should be meeting uh, earlier. Um, I think council should be meeting earlier and I think the committees should be meeting earlier. Yes, the election uh, did take too long and we are delayed because of the ECQ process. Um, but when the Lord Mayor says this is all happening the same as it happened last time, it fundamentally, um, factually is not. And they are delaying the start of council meetings, procedures and committees. Um, and that is very clear based on the agenda uh, for last time. Um, and certainly I think that we should be uh, pushing forward with both ENC and the council uh, meetings uh, to discuss the urgent business of this city, both ordinary and that related to the coronavirus. Oh, plus, um, uh, I certainly um, just would like to note that there are a number of new uh, members to um, uh, Civic Cabinet, might be the next motion, but I haven't got that yet, so I don't know. Uh, uh, but I'd just like to say, I, I, I just feel um, perhaps uh, Councillor Tracy Davis might have been a little bit hard done by, given the Lord Mayor has talked uh, about the need for experience. I mean, she has lots, um, you know, working with uh, the Lord Mayor's mentor, and I'm not sure why he's overlooked her as part of his Civic Cabinet. Other speakers? Lord Mayor. Just to uh, point out once again, another complete misre misrepresentation of the facts there by uh, a councillor. Uh, what we have had here is a delay in the declaration of the election. Uh, we cannot hold this meeting that we're having today until the election is declared. Uh, and that has taken much longer than point normal. Order. Uh, now, if, if I'm going to call this point of order, but please don't use it as an opportunity to interrupt the mayor to make a political point contrary to what he's saying at this time. Councillor Johnston. Claim to be misrepresented. Noted. Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you. Uh, and so there would have been earlier council meetings, there would have been earlier civic cabinet meetings if the election had been declared earlier. Uh, and the reality is once the election is declared, uh, which I understand happened on Friday last week, uh, then there's a requirement to give a certain number of business days notice for th this particular council of meeting, uh, which has occurred. Uh, and, and we have geared this process up as quickly as possible to get council meeting, to get the caretaker period coming to an end, which is happening uh, right now, uh, and so that we can get on with the business of council. Uh, so if Councillor Johnston or anyone else has a concern about the timeframes here, uh, that concern needs to be raised with the Electoral Commission of Queensland because we have acted uh, quickly to get things going uh, once the election has been declared. Um, your uh, 
misrepresentation, Councillor Johnston, and please limit your comments to the matter at hand and not uh, attempt to relitigate your argument. Councillor Johnston. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, the Lord Mayor misrepresented my speech. I have clearly pushed for having these meetings start earlier. It is within our discretion as a council to do so, and they could start tomorrow if he wanted to do so, as the election was declared last week. I'll now put the resolution. All those in favour, please say aye and raise your hands. Aye. 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 To the contrary, no. And please raise your hand. Anyone? All right. The ayes have it. Our councillors, the next item on the agenda is the membership of the standing committees, including the appointment of chairs and deputy chairs and the determination of membership tenure of those committees. Lord Mayor, the City Planning and Economic Development Committee, please. Uh, thank you, Mr uh, Chair. I move that the point membership... Of order. Point of order. Councillor Johnston. It is completely unreasonable that you have not circulated the list of names that is associated with this uh, motion. We don't know who's going to be on the committees. This information is always given to us at the council meeting. And to vote on each of these committees, we need to know who's on the first one and who's on the last one at the same time. It is completely unreasonable that you are not providing this information to us as normally happens at the physical council meetings. And all of these issues were things that should have been resolved prior to this meeting now, so I don't have to complain like this, but we can't vote on committee meetings if we don't know who's on those committees. Um, and it is unreasonable to ask us to do so without, even as a courtesy uh, to the Lord Mayor through you, Mr Chairman, even as a courtesy to your colleagues, you could have told us which committees that you are proposing. Uh, thanks, that thanks Councillor Johnson. I think you've made your point that you'd like this information in, in advance. Um, so just give me a moment to uh, have Not a Not even in advance. See. How about now? Uh, now, Councillor Johnston, the, that point of order was far too long. You made your point like three times. I'll, I'll find the information you're seeking. Excuse me. I've spoken to the clerks. There will be an email circulating the information, the membership of all council committees proposed uh, imminently. All right, Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Chair. Uh, I, look, I, I absolutely, I just want to start off by saying I absolutely have no problem with that information being circulated. And uh, my understanding was that it would be provided at the meeting. Um, and that was my expectation. So uh, it is being circulated now, but I'm going to read through the lists of uh, the different committees. So, Mr Chair, I move that the membership of the City Planning and Economic Development Committee be as follows. Uh, first of all, myself, who should be an ex officio member. Uh, Councillor Krista Adams, Councillor Fiona Hammond, Councillor Lisa Atwood, Councillor Peter Maddock, Councillor Cara Cook and Councillor Nicole Johnston. And that Councillor Krista Adams and Councillor Fiona Hammond be the chair and deputy chair respectively of that committee. Do I have a seconder? It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by uh, Councillor Landers. Uh, uh, I will call for debate. Would people like oh, me to hey, read hey, that no. again? Yeah, number one, we still don't have the motion, so I don't know. You're trying to appoint me to committee and I don't even know what it is. It's okay, Councillor Johnston. There's, there's, uh, well, there's 27 people. Well, can you read it back? No, hang on. Can no, you no. read it back so Councillor we know Johnston, what's Please don't haggle proposed. with me. As always, I, I am trying my best to be accommodating and that's why I've asked if people would like me to read it back to them and people have said yes. But please be mindful, there's 27 of us and we're trying to work through this all together. All right, the motion is... Uh, the clearly not, of the city. No, don't talk back to me, please. No, Councillor Johnston, um, do you, would you like me to read this or not? Because I've begun reading it. Would you like me to complete reading it or would you like to speak over me? I'd like a hard copy, please, Chair. All right. As I said, I, these I've are coming. There, there's, no, 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 no. You, you, there's no need for this disruption. This is a procedural matter, um, or this, excuse me, this is a matter of administrative um, uh, relevance. And um, I will now read the resolution as a courtesy to all councillors. 
the membership of the City Planning and Economic Development Committee to be as follows. The Lord Mayor, who shall be a member ex officio, Councillor Krista Adams, Councillor Fiona Hammond, Councillor Lisa Adwood, Councillor Peter Maddock, Councillor Cara Cook, and Councillor Nicole Johnston, and that Councillor Krista Adams and Councillor Fiona Hammond be the Chair and Deputy Chair, respectively, of that committee. Is there any debate for Lord Mayor? Further, uh, further debate? Councillor Johnston. Yes. Thank you, Mr Chairman. We still don't have a hard copy of this, and this um, exacerbates the problem. Um, a week or so ago, uh, the Lord Mayor asked us what committees we wanted to be on. This was not a committee that I asked to be on. I have no idea which committees I have been proposed to be on. I'm hearing it for the first time is read out. The Lord Mayor has indicated repeatedly today that he wants to consult with us. He wants to work with us. Um, here is the clearest indication that this Lord Mayor is doing whatever he wants to do without any consultation or reference to elected councillors that are not part of the LNP. Um, I don't know which two or three or four or six committees that I'm proposed to be on because I have not been told. It is unreasonable for us to sit here and debate a motion when you're proposing to appoint me to a committee I had no idea you were appointing me to. I know that there's at least one other councillor who would like to be on this um, committee because Councillor Shree uh, in, copied me in on his suggestions to the Lord Mayor. The Lord Mayor has not spoken to why he's appointing these people to committees. Um, and he's not discussed with us in advance. He's not circulated the motion to us in advance as a courtesy. And it is unreasonable to ask us to make decisions um, across the seven committees, not knowing which committees we're going to be appointed to. This process demonstrates to me more clearly that this administration, this LNP administration, is running this council like a dictatorship. And despite the Lord Mayor's platitudes, he is absolutely not interested in consulting or cooperatively working with other councillors. Not even sending us a copy of the committees he's proposing we be on, I think, is extremely poor I mean, Brisbane residents who may be watching might be thinking, if I attended a meeting and I was being proposed to do something, perhaps someone might have discussed it with me in advance. So I just feel that the way in which, number one, the Lord Mayor personally has gone about this um, is disrespectful to all other councillors. Uh, two, um, there's been no indication to me why he's changing the committees. I certainly, in writing to him a week or so ago, indicated I wanted to continue on the two committees I was on, which was uh, Parks, Environment and Infrastructure. I've been given uh, no notice. Um, I'm hearing it for the first time literally right now, um, no explanation, and the courtesy has not even been given to me or any other councillor um, to provide the list of committee memberships so we know what's going on. Shame on you, Lord Mayor. I think it shows everybody um, that the trite words that you trotted out about cooperation are... Councillor Johnston, important. Councillor Johnston, please direct all comment. And I appreciate that this is a little bit of a different format, but please continue to um, uh, direct comments through the chair, and please uh, re re um, uh, refer to other councillors by their titles and in the third person, please. Have you concluded? Um, for, okay, further speakers. Councillor Shree. Thanks, Chair. And uh, like Councillor Johnson, I also haven't seen the full list of committee as and proposed members. Um, but I am quite disappointed that the Lord Mayor seems to have kicked me off the City Planning Committee. I've been a member of the City Planning Committee for four years now. And without blowing my own horn, I'd suggest I have a, a better understanding of development assessment processes than most of the councillors in the city. And certainly of um, the urban planning issues, which are most directly and significantly infected in, in a city suburbs. I wrote to the Lord Mayor in good faith, identifying that I'd like to remain on the City Planning Committee and that that was one of my highest priorities to be on that committee. Um, and I took the Lord Mayor at his word that he would genuinely try to accommodate councillors' requests and um, work with us collaboratively across party lines. So I'm sure the Lord Mayor has his reasons. I'm not accusing him of any malice or um, any deliberate attempt to deny the council their preferred choice of committee, but 
when I heard that Councillor Johnston, who didn't want to be on the City Planning Committee, has been placed there and I've been taken off, that does raise some concerns for me and I think perhaps undermines the Lawn Mayor's credibility when he suggests that he's trying to work collaboratively across party lines. So, Lord Mayor, I'd be interested to know if you'd consider an, an amendment to allow me to sit on that committee. Um, I, I won't bother moving the amendment unless I get some indication from the Mayor that that's something he's amenable to. But it, it does seem quite disappointing that one of the more experienced councillors from the City Planning Committee has been kicked off that committee without a clear reason. Um, and in the absence of a clear justification from the Mayor as to why he's done that, and why he's placed a councillor who didn't have a particularly strong interest in being on that committee, on that committee, um, it would seem to raise concerns that this is an attempt to keep the one Greens councillor out of conversations about city planning. And I'm not accusing the Lord Mayor of that motive, but that is a logical conclusion that the residents of Brisbane will draw about why the one Greens councillor who wanted to be on the city planning committee and when other councillors didn't want to be on that committee, I've still been taken off. So. I hope the Lord Mayor can offer a clear and um, honest explanation of why that decision has been made. Um, if there's some other reason I'm not aware of, I'd be really keen to hear it. But I've, um, yeah, I've tried to collaborate with the Lord Mayor in good faith and I'm very disappointed that I've been removed from that committee. Uh, councillors, can I please direct your attention to the post-election folder in ASDEC docs, which has a complete list of the proposed membership of all committees that we'll be discussing in the next period that has been placed there and should be available to you all right now. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Cassidy. Um, yes, I haven't had a chance to look at this, obviously. I'm just looking uh, right now. But uh, similarly, we acted in good faith. The Lord Mayor um, uh, asked for me for the... Um, the opposition's um, suggestions for committee membership, which I sent through to him. I've been uh, requesting that information from the CEO for days now as to what the list of the membership would be. Uh, we acted in good faith. If the Lord Mayor wanted, had multiple requests, I'm sure that could um, have been accommodated um, through some discussion and negotiation. But this is the first time we're hearing this, and I had, in fact, uh, indicated that both Councillor Cook and myself wanted to be uh, on the city planning committee uh, this time around. So obviously there are two councillors who wanted to be on it that um, have been denied that opportunity and a councillor that didn't want to be on this committee um, and who wasn't consulted about it or, or um, in any any way at all, um, it seems, has been put on this committee. So I um, acted in good faith when I took the call from the Lord Mayor and has com have communicated with him directly um, about various matters and, and remain very open to that. Um, however, when when I get a call like that uh, and then this is the outcome after we act in good faith, it really leaves a pretty uh, bitter taste in your mouth, Chair, about the way in which this council is going to be uh, run over this term. Um, I just worry now that any overture that the Lord Mayor makes is completely false. Further speakers? Councillor Cook. Uh, point of order, Mr Chair, I'd like to move an amendment to the City yes. Planning Committee membership. Please, please propose your amendment. Uh, to remove uh, Councillor Nicole Johnston from the membership and replace with Councillor Jared Cassidy. And a seconder for me? A seconder, please. Councillor Cassidy. Um, Uh, Councillor Cook, to the amendment, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. As we've just heard, um, the Leader of the Opposition has outlined that uh, we acted in good faith in providing our proposed memberships to the Lord Mayor. Uh, it is clear that other councillors, including Councillor Johnston and Councillor Shree, have done the same. Uh, it is absolutely appalling that the Lord Mayor has chosen to unilaterally make a decision to place a councillor who has not even uh, submitted a request to be on the City Planning Committee uh, and placed that councillor, Councillor Johnston, on that committee uh, without her knowledge or consent uh, in circumstances where he had the option of a number of opposition councillors. Uh, he has chosen to place someone on that committee uh, who has expressed no interest whatsoever in being on that committee. And 
in our view, uh, Councillor Cassidy would be an appropriate uh, member of that committee. He has been on that committee previously. He has ex extensive experience uh, on that committee and it would be appropriate now for him to uh, replace Councillor Johnston given the debate that has just occurred. And we would ask that the Lord Mayor and all councillors support this motion. Further speakers? Councillor Johnston. Yes. Councillor Johnston, can you please turn your microphone on? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr Chair. Certainly to the amendment motion. Um, as we've now been provided with a list of the um, committee memberships, um, I can see that um, despite the Lord Mayor's request as to which committees I wanted to go on, I've not been um, asked to serve on either of those. Um, so that I, I just flag there are some serious problems with what's been put forward and I can see why he might have been wanting to um, hide this information from us until it's almost too late. Um, I don't know why over the past week or so, and I sent my advice to him, it's even longer. On the 7th of April, I sent advice to the Lord Mayor and I said the following. Regarding your committee request, I currently serve on the Infrastructure and the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committees and I'd be pleased to continue on these committees. As you keep saying, experience is important at this time. So certainly, um, whilst you know, the LNP have 19 seats. This is the problem um, for the people of Brisbane, Mr Chair. The LNP run this council as a dictatorship um, without consultation. And I think it is extremely disappointing um, that both Councillor uh, Cassidy and Councillor Shree, who've clearly put their names forward to be on this committee, the Lord Mayor has just decided to ignore them, then ignore my requests, and suggestions and put me on a committee that I've not asked to be on. Um, now, I, I just I find with, and all of this has been done without explanation by the Lord Mayor. He's sitting there, he doesn't care to speak to why, he's not explained why. Um, and I think it is extremely disappointing that yet again, his glib words in his speech about consulting and if other people have good ideas, he's happy to take them on board. We sent our good ideas two weeks ago to the Lord Mayor and he has ignored them. Um, I hope the people of Brisbane are aware of what this Lord Mayor is going to be like for the next four years, and that is to ignore anybody who is not a member of the LNP. Further speakers to the amendment? Councillor Cassidy. Uh, thanks, Chair. It's quite, um, quite a simple one, clearly, if Councillor Johnston uh, has indicated to the Lord Mayor and just said now that she uh, um, had a preference to remain on the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee and never requested to go on to the City Planning Committee, uh, that uh, her and I could simply swap. So if this um, amendment is supported by the Council, we can move a simple amendment to the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee when that comes up. Uh, to remove my name and insert Councillor Nicole Johnson into there, and that will be sorted. And that will that would then, um, you know, show that the Lord Mayor could be taken at his word. I suppose it would be a step in the right direction for him, anyway. Further speakers, Councillor Cook, please. Uh, Councillor Cook. Thank yep. you. Sorry, Chair. That's okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I've now had the opportunity to review that standing committee membership list as well. And as Councillor Cassidy has said, it's pretty clear uh, that both of those councillors uh, requested could be accommodated. Uh, and if the Lord Mayor is willing and able to, uh, we would ask that he does make that accommodation today. All right. All those in favour of the amendment, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Thank you. And those against the amendment, please say no and raise your hands. Yeah. Oh, no. no. Uh, pathetic. No. Terrible. Just pathetic. No. Thank you. The, the motion is lost. The amendment is lost. The amendment is lost. Uh, I will now call on further. Division. I'm calling a division. Hopefully Second. there's someone else. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there's a division called by Councillor Johnson and Councillor Shree. I'll now ring the bells.
Thank you, councillors. Now, all those in favour of the amendment, please raise your hand and hold it there so it can be counted. Please lower your hands. All those who are against the amendment, please raise your hands and hold them there so they may be counted. Excuse me, councillors. Thank you, councillors. Please lower your hands. Uh, any abstentions? This might, I appreciate, this may seem silly, but any abstentions, please raise your hands. There are no abstentions. All right. Which, uh, Clarks, please read the, uh, read the result of the division. Mr Chair, the uh, noes have it. The voting being seven in favour and 19 against. The amendment is lost. The amendment was lost. We'll now return to the substantive motion about membership of the committees. My record shows the last speaker was Councillor Cook. Are there any further speakers? The Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Chair. I just wanted to make some comments on the, uh, the committee process that we're going through at the moment um, and also dispel some of the, once again, mistruths that we've been hearing peddled in this meeting uh, by opposition councillors. Uh, the reality is uh, opposition, opposition councillors, um, including um, uh, independent and green councillors, uh, appear to fail to understand the democratic process here. Uh, this is democracy in action, uh, and this is the outcome of the last election uh, being implemented today. Uh, but it is also uh, really important to acknowledge that there is a difference between consultation and always getting your own way. And I mentioned before, uh, there order. are certain councillors that think order. that... Councillor Shree? Will the Lord Mayor take a question? Lord Mayor, will you take a question? Lord Mayor declines. Lord Mayor, please continue. And so it is physically impossible for any consultation process... Uh, to get everyone what they want. That is impossible. Whether it's a major project that we are building, uh, whether it's the views on residents uh, on, in relation to a local park upgrade, we all know it as local councillors. You conduct consultation, you give people the opportunity to have their say, to provide their feedback, uh, but it is impossible to grant every wish. And we are here to make decisions. That is our job. And we make decisions based on the best information we have. Uh, we make decisions based on the democratic process that is in place and the election result that has been decided just in recent days. Uh, and that is the appropriate way to do things. Now, uh, there's been an outrageous suggestion made by one of the councillors here uh, that uh, this is somehow um, dictating uh, an outcome. Yet that same councillor has acknowledged that they were asked for their feedback and they provided feedback. So to suggest that there has been no consultation, 
su to suggest that there has been no consultation process is completely false. Uh, but what I can tell you is that uh, from the Labor opposition, uh, eight out of 10 of their requests were granted. Eight out of 10 for the opposition. Uh, and that includes ensuring that all of their shadow chairs were on the relevant um, committees, which is appropriate. Uh, but not every single request could be granted. Uh, but in terms of labour, eight out of 10 requests were granted. Now, um, Councillor Shree, I believe it was, made the comment that somehow, um, uh, the suggestion that somehow being not being a formal member of a committee somehow locks you out of the process. Once again, completely false. Uh, any member of the public and indeed any councillor can sit in on any uh, of these committees that we're deciding today. Point of uh, order. Now... Point of order, Councillor Johnston. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the Lord Mayor is deliberately misleading. No, thank you, uh, Councillor Johnston. Can, Lord, no. I'm calling this Mayor, the paper. Please, um, please continue. If you are not a member of a committee, you can't uh, participate. Councillor Johnston, Councillor Johnston, please don't misuse points of order to, to, to advance your argument. It's, it's not appropriate. Lord Mayor, please continue. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, look, as I was saying, these uh, committees that we're deciding today in the membership Sorry, point of order. Saying. Point of order, Councillor Johnston. Just to be clear, you're saying that misleading the chamber is not a point of order? No, Councillor Johnston, I'm saying that, that you misusing points of order is an act of um, misconduct. Well, okay? surely that we it's, have to it's, listen it's, to it's, it's first. It's, no, no, misuse of points of order is an act of disorder, and you know that, and so I'm asking you not to do it, please. Lord Mayor, uh, please continue. I'm simply pointing out the complete misrepresentation that's going on here by certain uh, opposition or non-administration councillors. I assumed that once the election was over, uh, the lying would stop, but it appears to be going on uh, full steam ahead in this meeting. The reality is order. any councillor... Point of order, Councillor Johnston. Point of order, Councillor Johnston. Lord Mayor, uh, sorry, uh, Mr Chairman, the Lord Mayor just called me and other opposition councillors liars and uh, mm -hmm. I would think that that is an act of disorder under the uh, meeting's local laws. And uh, Thank you, Councillor Johnson, your point to you, mate. Really also, I must remind you that you are not an opposition councillor. We've been over this many times. You and Councillor Shree are cross benches, not formal opposition, OK? We've been over this well, a few times. Mr Chairman, uh, Councillor Cassidy the is Lord not your Mayor leader. Unless you're, to unless you're informing me that Councillor Cassidy is your leader, then you are not opposition, you are non-majority, and there Mr. is a difference. Mr Chairman, there I object right. to the Lord Mayor calling me a liar. I no, am thank, not No, no Councillor Johnston, I have to correct you I early. I ask that is withdrawn. Because you are, unless, I, I've not been advised, but unless you are now informing you are now part of Councillor Cassidy's team, uh, then you are not in the opposition. But if you are part of his team, then you are. So just let me know. Um, it's not a big deal to me if you are or you aren't. Councillor so Lyons, me I and object we'll do it. to the Lord Mayor calling me and other councillors a liar. Stop I've, playing I've, games. That is a breach of the good order conduct of this council and I ask for a ruling about being called a liar. Well, Councillor Johnston, please please um, just keep these things in proportion, all right? Um, you've, you've yelled at me three times now and it's not appreciated. Because you are uh, playing now, No, no, don't games, talk over me. So make don't talk over ruling. me. All right, uh, uh, the Lord Mayor, I found that language a little strong and I'd like in future to you please refrain from using those ty that type of language and find a con a terms and conducts more appropriate for this place, please. Lord Mayor. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, I will simply go back to um, my statement that I believe uh, there are councillors in this meeting who have completely misrepresented the facts of the situation and they've done that for party political reasons or their own political agenda. Uh, and that's continued to happen throughout this meeting. Uh, and what they are simply doing is ignoring really important facts about how this process works, uh, including the fact, as I was uh, just pointing out, that these committee meetings that we're talking about are open to the public and they are also open to the media and they are open to any other councillor who wants to uh, sit in on the meeting. Uh, so uh, what occurs in that committee meeting is fully transparent. And so to suggest that somehow um, councillors are being locked out of that process uh, is simply not true. 
the public is involved. Media are, are welcome to be there. Um, the public is welcome to uh, be there. And other councillors, even if they're not formal members of that committee, are welcome uh, to sit in on that committee. Now, when it comes to engagement, if you are not a formal member of a committee, uh, that simply doesn't limit your engagement um, overall on that and that particular committee's responsibilities. As I pointed out before, and every council opportunity to speak on those matters. And so you may not be a member of the uh, planning committee, for example, but no one's saying that you can't talk about matters in the planning committee uh, in the council chamber and you have opportunities when reports come through, when committee reports come through, including general business as well, to raise any matter that you wish to raise. Uh, so it is just completely untrue uh, what is being claimed here. Uh, the reality is we are setting up committee memberships, but that doesn't limit uh, the ability of, of other people uh, to sit in on those committees, to receive the information being presented in those committees. And then uh, when it comes to uh, an appropriate forum like the council chamber, to comment at length and debate uh, issues going through to that committee. Councillors are aware of that. They are aware of that, but they are choosing to misrepresent the facts and to push a political agenda here. Thank you. I'll now put the resolution. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye and keep your hand raised. Aye. 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 And those against, please, raise, please lower your hands. And those against, please raise your hand and say no. 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 The ayes have it. And also, Division. I must... Yeah, there's a division call by Councillor Shree. Do I have a... Seated. Councillor Johnston, please ring the bells.
Thank you, councillors. All those in favour, please raise your hand and hold it there so it may be counted. The ayes. Aye. Aye. I'm voting. Aye. Please lower your hands. All those voting no, please raise your hand now and hold it there so it may be counted. No. Oh. And all those, please lower your hands. And all those abstaining, please raise your hand. All right, clerks, please read the result. Does the Chair, the ayes have it for the voting being 19 in favour and 7 against. Thank you. The ayes have it. And also for the purpose of the record on item 8, the ayes have it there as well. All right, I'll now, um, Lord Mayor, the City Standards Community Health and Safety Committee, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, as has been pointed out previously, the um, committee memberships for um, all, all of the remaining committees have been circulated. Uh, it was my intention uh, that that occurred at this meeting. Um, I apologise that this hasn't occurred. Um, I am not sure why it hadn't occurred, but um, certainly that information is now available to councillors and has been circulated. Uh, Mr Chair, I move that the membership of the City Standards Community Health and Safety Committee be as follows. Uh, the Lord Mayor, who shall be a member ex officio, uh, Councillor Kim Marks, Councillor Stephen Toomey, Councillor Tracy Davis, Councillor Sarah Hutton, Councillor Peter Cumming, and Councillor Nicole Johnston. And that Councillor Kim Marks and Councillor Stephen Toomey be the chair and deputy chair, respectively, of that committee. Second. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that, uh, that the membership of the City Standards and Community Health and Safety Committee be as read. Would, would councillors like me to read it again or are they comfortable reading it off the sheet that's been provided to them? I'll take, no, I will, I will believe that councillors have the ability to read the sheet that's been provided. So uh, it's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers. Is there any debate? Lord Mayor? No. Further speakers? Councillor Shree. Thanks Chair. And I, I guess I've, I've been a bit disappointed at the tone of discussion so far, I'm certainly not accusing the mayor of any particular malice. All I'm asking for is a straightforward, practical explanation as to why some of the committee membership requests couldn't be accommodated. So particularly, we've, we've talked about the city planning committee and it would have seemed quite simple to make a direct one-on-one -on -one swap as, as, a, as opposed to, as, as proposed by some of the other councillors in this chamber. Um, I actually sent the mayor a, a list of my top four priorities ordered numerically of the committees I'd prefer to be on. Um, instead, I've been, this this committee that we're debating the membership of now was one of those committees I was interested in um, being on this committee if I couldn't have one of my top three preferences. Uh, and the mayor hasn't even put me, up, put me on this one. And so I'm just feeling a bit sad and hurt and disappointed. Um, I'm feeling frustrated and uh, a little bit betrayed because I thought there was a genuine commitment to work collaboratively. And so I'm not, trying to accuse anyone of anything, but I'd just ask in good faith, can you offer a practical explanation as to why my request for membership on the city planning committee or one of my other priorities, such as the infrastructure committee or this committee couldn't be accommodated? Was it a question of the times clashed? Was it a question of you didn't want a green and an independent councillor on the same committee because you wanted to at least one labor councillor on the committee? What is, what is the practical justification or practical explanation of why you couldn't accommodate my request. If you have a... But Councillor Shree, Councillor Shree, I have no issue with your line. However, can I please ask you to address comments through the chair and refer the Lord Mayor in third person, please? Sure, sorry time. about that. That's fine. Yeah, so through you, Chair, I'm asking the Lord Mayor, what is the practical reason? Is there some other um, explanation that's not a, a, that I'm not aware of? Is there some other reason? Um, is it a simple matter of scheduling. It doesn't appear to be because the committees I've requested on 
requested to be on could have been accommodated based on the schedule that's been put forward. Um, and certainly swapping myself and Councillor Johnston in terms of the city planning mem committee membership would have been fine. Um, but yeah, why is it that when I requested to be on city planning, public transport, or alternatively infrastructure, or alternatively this committee, um, why have I instead been placed on another committee and, and not even been put on this one? It's a straightforward question. Um, in the interest of building trust and saving time, I'd, I'd really like a, a genuine explanation. Um, I have still some faith that the Lord Mayor is a reasonable person and, and would like to um, work collaboratively, but um, the dismissive approach and, and the dismissive response to some of the concerns raised doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. And so, yeah, hopefully there's some reason I'm not seen here, but it, it creates a situation of distrust and antagonism and ultimately division, which I don't think is healthy going forward. And it's gonna result in longer, more protracted meetings. It's gonna result in more divisions and debates here in these full council meetings. So could you at least offer a clear reason as to why those um, requests of mine couldn't be fully accommodated? And that might at least satisfy me that I don't then feel the need to drag things out and debate the point on each of these membership motions. Thank you. Further speakers? Councillor Johnston. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sadly, again, round two on this issue. Um, City Standards Community Health and Safety Committee was not a committee that I asked to be on. Um, I asked to be on the um, Parks, Environment and Sustainability Committee and the Infrastructure Committee. I did offer if they needed uh, some extra assistance uh, to be on this committee, um, but it was not one of the committees um, that I uh, asked to be on. Um, now, with response to the Lord Mayor um, and uh, the little bit of explanation that he did give, um, I think members of the community and certainly councillors um, would have the view that if you engage with consultation with somebody, whether it's a councillor or a community group or a stakeholder group, um, that you do that consultation in good faith, uh, that you listen um, to the feedback that you get and where possible, um, you incorporate that feedback into your decision-making process. Um, now, you know, there's a whole line of what constitutes good consultation. And I can tell you Brisbane City Council's got no idea what that is. And the Lord Mayor of Brisbane clearly um, does not because, um, you know, his view of consultation is I'll ask you what you think and then I'll ignore you. Now, that's what's happened here. Um, uh, I note that the Lord Mayor did give a little bit of an explanation by saying that eight out of the 10 ALP uh, uh, requests uh, to be on certain committees such as this one uh, were accommodated. So that's 80%. I know that Councillor Shri got one of the two committees uh, that he was going to be on. That's 50%. Um, I made two requests and got zero of those. So that's zero percent. So for the people of Brisbane who might be watching at home and other councillors, um, the ALP got 80% of what they asked for, the Greens got 50% of what they asked for, and the independent councillor, that's me, got zero, zero. So, you know, the Lord Mayor suggests that he wants to work with me or he wants to be consultative or he wants to engage, um, you know, in a proactive way. Um, it Clearly, that's not the case. And he's demonstrating um, with the last motion and this motion that he is not interested in the feedback um, that I am providing. He's not interested in working in a co cooperative or collaborative way with me. And he's ignored 100% of the um, feedback that I have uh, provided. And, you know, when you look at the fact that the ALP gets 80% of what they want, the Greens get 50% of what they want, I reckon the people of Brisbane are going to be scratching their heads and saying, you know, 74% of us voted for Councillor Johnston. Why is her view being ignored by this LNP administration? So I find the Lord Mayor's, um, you know, uh, approach on this to be um, 
outrageous, honestly, outrageous. I mean, it just, even even last time in 2016, when we had three council meetings in April, <coughs> um, uh, the uh, I remember from that meeting, it was the first time in three terms that I'd actually been asked what committees I wanted to be on. And then um, the Lord Mayor at that stage put me on one of the two that I asked for. Um, to be to be ignored completely, to have those views and the views of my residents, I'm here to represent my residents. And the Lord Mayor says this is about democracy. Yes, it is. Um, and the Lord Mayor is ignoring the views of the elected representative for Tennyson Ward. Um, the disappointing part is the, the role of Lord Mayor is to um, engage um, with all councillors to work across the whole of the city. And it's pretty clear on day one um, that he's not interested in doing that at all. Um, so, look, I understand... Um, Councillor Marks has been uh, promoted to um, the chair of this council. I congratulate her on that. Um, I know she was the deputy there for quite some time. Um, this is a really important committee of council. Uh, my understanding is it now combines um, uh, field services and most of cars or all of cars, I think, um, which are very important um, functional and operative parts of our council. Um, but I just think it should be clearly on the record um, that the way in which the LNP is going about um, the first day of this new administration is to ignore um, uh, the views of councillors, uh, to not listen to them, and um, what's worse, in the Lord Mayor's own words, give the ALP 80% of what they want, give the Greens 50% of what they want and give the independent 0% of what they want. In my view, this demonstrates more clearly um, why this uh, council, all councils, including our own, um, should not be driven by party politics. Um, the Lord Mayor could have at any time discussed this with me over the last two weeks and chose not to do so. He could have provided this in advance so I could have spoken to him prior to the meeting. He chose not to do so. So this is the only forum in which we have to yeah, raise yeah. our concerns about the way in which this process um, has been undertaken. And it is hugely disappointing, disrespectful and dismissive in my view. And it demonstrates, I think, very clearly the type of Lord Mayor um, that uh, actually uh, more people actually voted for a different Lord Mayor than voted for Councillor Schrinner to be Lord Mayor. It's just they all did not vote for the same person. Further speakers? Lord Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Look, this, this is getting quite repetitive and um, Councillor Johnson and others need to understand that saying the same thing over and over again doesn't make it right or accurate. Uh, but one thing she did say that was accurate is that the opposition has taken precedence here um, and she is not uh, the opposition. As much as she would like to think that she's the leader of the opposition, as much as she likes, uh, would like to think that uh, her views um, uh, are more important than anyone else's here, uh, the reality is there is a formal opposition. And as uh, was pointed out, um, they uh, were given precedent when it comes to uh, positions on committees. And that is the right thing to do because uh, there are chairs and then there are shadow chairs. And those shadow chairs um, were rightly given precedent in committee positions. Um, and that is the appropriate way uh, for things to occur. And so uh, I just stress again, um, continuing to say the same thing over again doesn't make it correct and doesn't make it right, Councillor Johnston. Uh, we need to move forward with this meeting. Exactly right. Uh, and we need to uh, make sure that we get these committees up and running um, so that we can get on the business of this council. Thank you, councillors. I, I will now put the resolution. Yes, Councillor Shree. Just wanted to see if the mayor would just take a quick question, just to clarify. He has concluded, Councillor Shree. Um, however, I'm sure you'll get an opportunity to ask the same question in the near future. Um, I will now put the resolution. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Thank you. 
please lower your hands. All those who are against the resolution, please raise your hand and say no. 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 Please, please keep your hand, please hold your hands up. Thank you. Please lower your hands. Thank you. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, Lord Mayor, the Community Arts and Nighttime Economy Committee, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I move that the membership of the Community Arts and Nighttime Economy Committee be as follows. The Lord Mayor, who shall be a, mem a member ex officio, uh, Councillor Vicky Howard, Councillor Sandy Landers, Councillor Stephen Toomey, Councillor James Mackay, Councillor Cara Cook, Councillor Peter Cumming, and that Councillor Vicky Howard and Councillor Sandy Landers be the chair and deputy chair respectively of that committee. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the membership of the Committee Arts and Nighttime Economy Committee be as read. Is there any debate? Lord Mayor. No. Further speakers? There being none, Lord Mayor. No. No. I'll now put the resolution. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, those against, please raise your hand and say no. Thank you. Please lower your hand. Thank you. Uh, the ayes have it. I will now move to the next resolution. Lord Mayor, the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I move that the membership of the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee meeting uh, committee be as follows. Uh, the Lord Mayor, who shall be a member ex officio, Councillor Fiona Cunningham, Councillor Tracy Davis, Councillor Sandy Landers, Councillor James Mackay, Councillor Steve Griffiths and Councillor Jared Cassidy. And that Councillor Fiona Cunningham and Councillor Tracy Davis be the chair and deputy chair, respectively, of that committee. Seconded. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the membership of the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee be as read by the Lord Mayor. Is there any debate? A Lord Mayor. Other speakers, further speakers? Councillor Johnston. Uh, yes, Mr Chairman. Um, I just want to... Um, uh, so a few words and then move an amendment here. Um, for the past 12 years, I've served on the environment. For the past 12 years, I've served on this committee. And I find it incredibly disappointing um, that when the leader of the opposition, Councillor Cassidy, was happy to swap with me and go on to uh, the City Planning and Economic Development Committee um, that the Lord Mayor was not willing to even consider it. Now, we've just heard from the Lord Mayor again that rightfully so, he is giving um, the Labor opposition primary or preference. Um, clearly, that's not actually the case either because the Labor Party moved an amendment um, to put Councillor Cassidy uh, onto the planning committee and move me to this committee. Um, so the Lord Mayor has been um, dishonest in what he has just said publicly uh, with respect to um, respecting uh, the leader of the opposition's uh, moves. I'm used to being treated um, like I'm zero. That's what's been going on uh, for the past decade. Um, but uh, the Lord Mayor um, says that uh, I'm not. I'm not even counted. I'm not. I'm not uh, officially part of uh, the process of of this uh, council. My views don't matter whatsoever. Councillor Cassidy's views uh, matter, but not when it comes to um, a consultative process with respect to this committee. So I move the following amendment that councillor uh, to the uh, membership of the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee, um, that councillor uh, Jared Cassidy uh, is moved to the uh, City Planning and Economic Development Committee and that I, councillor Nicole Johnston, am moved uh, to be a member of the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee. Second. I'm not sure that we can accept that, councillor Johnston. I don't think we can make an amendment to a committee 
that's not before us in this amendment resolution. I think all you can do is remove Councillor Cassidy and put yourself on. I think that's the only thing within the rules that can happen because we can't, because the membership of the city planning committee is not here. It's been dealt with. We'd have to go back to that. So that would have to be another resolution in another, uh, another resolution after this one's concluded. So uh, I, I'm happy I'm to what you're trying it. to say, but what I need you to I'm do to for this to be, it. yeah, I need you to just, just say, remove Councillor Cassidy and replace with you. That's, that's the only amendment that would be valid in this instance. Okay, I'm happy to reword that, um, and I I move um, and I'm, I'll, I'll if this motion is passed, I will immediately resign from the City Planning and Economic Development Committee. Um, just to be clear, um, I move uh, that Councillor Cassidy is removed from the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee, um, and that I am appointed to the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee. You, uh, is there a second? Is there a seconder? Yeah. Councillor Shree. Uh, Councillor Johnston, uh, to the to the amendment, please. Um, yes, just very briefly. I think I've made my views very clear on this. Um, the Lord Mayor says um, that he wants to work cooperatively and collaboratively with councillors. This is his opportunity to do so. Um, it's been a good sort of 20 minutes, half an hour since this issue um, flared up. He's had time to reflect. Um, he also says that he does want to work with the Labor opposition, even if he doesn't want to work with me. He's made that very clear. This is his opportunity to show the residents of Brisbane um, that what he just told them um, is true. Councillor Cassidy wants to be on the City Planning and Economic Development Committee. I want to be on the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee. I am more than happy to immediately resign. Um, I can send an email through to the CEO straight away. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to take up um, a position on the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee. Further speakers? Councillor Cassidy? Uh, thanks, Chair. I, um, given the, my understanding is the City Planning and Economic Development Committee won't be coming uh, back for a vote during this meeting now to amend its membership, I, while I support what Councillor Johnston's saying, and I've moved a very similar um, oh, I've seconded a similar amendment that Councillor Cook um, moved um, for the City Planning Environment, uh, City Planning Economic Development Committee, um, in that an accommodation could have been made. The councillors that were directly affected clearly here on the public record, there's been live stream of the people of Brisbane agreed um, uh, to swap these committees. Had this conversation been had earlier, even half an hour before this meeting um, was uh, commenced, like I um, requested of the CEO of this information half an hour before and yesterday as well. We could have had a conversation to work out uh, these issues. So while um, I don't think we can support this amendment, um, which would see um, uh, a member of the opposition removed from this committee uh, and then um, uh, not put on to another committee during this meeting, I do accept what Councillor Johnston is saying and agree that um, uh, uh, this would be a solution that wouldn't change any other committee or the makeup of the administration councils on those committees. Uh, so I'd say to the Lord Mayor, my request would be that um, these uh, changes that we're requesting be brought to the next council meeting, the next on um, Tuesday the 7th of May to um, for amendments to the memberships of those committees, because that would be a genuinely consultative process. I get what he's saying, that um, eight out of the 10 positions that we requested have been accommodated. However, uh, this is um, a position that is mutually agreeable to the councillors that are um, affected by it and it would make no material difference whatsoever um, to the makeup of those committee meetings or to the um, uh, to the LMP uh, majorities on those so and, and the functions of those committees so I just reiterate that point that um, I get you know one style of consultation uh, is for um, you know a request for information to be provided that information then be provided and the administration do with what they want uh, another style of consultation is to actually have a have a conversation uh, with those councils providing that information and finding particularly at the moment in um, in the climate that we're finding ourselves in trying to work as cooperatively as we can online and trying to make this whole new system work um, I just think um, extending um, uh, that courtesy to councillors um, would be a step in the right direction. Further speakers, Councillor Shree. 
Thanks, Chair. I'll just reinforce Councillor Cassie's comments and note that I, I think this is a genuine test of the Lord Mayor's character and of how sincere he is um, in his desire to work collaboratively across party lines. As others have noted, what's proposed here is a straightforward one-for-one -one swap. Um, both the councillors involved are happy to swap positions. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any material impact on scheduling or the overall composition of the relevant committees. It's a simple change, um, but I'd, even though I'd also like to be on the city planning committee, I'm, I'm happy to support this change request. Um, and I think if, if the mayor is genuine in, in his commitment to working collaboratively, then it would seem this would be a good time to show it. And this would be a good time to show that respect to other elected representatives and to the thousands of residents who voted them in. So I guess the ball's in the mayor's court. Um, it's a very small and easy thing to agree to in the grand scheme of things. It's not like they're asking for the world. They're just asking if they can each swap with one another from particular committees. And I think it would be a little bit spiteful and a little bit trite to deny such a straightforward request. Um, I don't see what the administration has to gain for it. And for, for refusing it, I don't see um, how it's in the broader public interest to deny such a simple request. Uh, it, it would seem to show good faith in terms of working collaboratively with um, Labor and Green and independent councillors. And I think it would be respected by the people of Brisbane more generally, because so often we hear these frustrations that parties don't work well with each other and that they're always attacking each other and criticising each other. Here's a very simple chance to show uh, in good faith that uh, opposition councillor and an independent councillor can make a request and that you'll take it on board. Um, it doesn't cost you any money. It, it doesn't hurt anyone else. It's a very simple, easy thing to agree to. Um, and I, I, for one, I'm very hopeful and optimistic that the mayor will show a bit of common sense and, and agree to this request. Um, but yeah, if, if he doesn't, I think that would reflect very poorly on him and on his leadership team. So I guess we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I, I just don't understand. I don't understand why the administration wouldn't agree to this request. And I'm also still a bit disappointed that um, my request for a simple explanation of the practical reasons as to why certain committee rec membership requests couldn't be honoured hasn't been agreed to. So that's all I'm asking. The mayor isn't answering questions during his own comments. So I'm just asking again now, if there's, there's a practical reason why these swaps can't happen, just lay it out there. Give the people of Brisbane a clear explanation, some rational justification for refusal, and, and then people can judge that justification on its merits. But what you're doing at the moment through you, Chair, is that you're not even offering a justification. You're just saying, no, it can't be done, sorry. Um, so let, let's hear it, let's hear the reasons, and, and, and let's see the, the mayor prove his character in this time. All right, further speakers? Lord Mayor. I will now put the resolution about the membership of the Environment, Parks and Sustainability Committee. All those in favour say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Thank you. And please lower your hands and all those Sorry, against... isn't this the amendment? Yeah. That was oh, the excuse amendment. me. I'm sorry. I you want Thanks to ask so much me. for I'm your so support. I really appreciate it. Excuse me. Excuse me. No, uh, that that's my error, and I apologise. Uh, Councillor Johnston, in uh, in response to the amendment, please. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to Councillor Cassidy and Councillor Shree um, for their. Uh, uh, contribution. I note the Lord Mayor didn't speak to the amendment, so again, he's not prepared um, to put his reasons uh, on uh, on the public record. Um, and um, I'm just I'm incredibly disappointed, um, as I'm sure everybody in Brisbane who's watching can see, um, that uh, the residents that I've been elected to represent and myself are being treated with such disdain. Um, I mean, it just comes down to the fact that the Lord Mayor says he wants to work cooperative with people but won't. Now, I understand Councillor Cassidy's position. It, it leaves him in a terrible position um, with the Labor Party because the Lord Mayor said no to 
um, the uh, change with the City Planning and Economic Development Committee. Um, I understand, um, you know, that that leaves him not on one committee, but I am prepared to resign from the other committee. We could do it today or we could do it at the first meeting back. Um, but uh, I'd echo Councillor Shree's comments. Um, this is a minor change that doesn't impact the overall running of the committees. It doesn't um, impact the power balance of the committees. The LNP still control by four to two every single committee or five if the Lord Mayor wants to sit in, um, every single committee of council. So, you know, I don't understand you know, do they not have confidence in Councillor Cunningham to actually manage the meeting? Um, I, look, I, I don't know um, why a request that both Councillor Cassidy and myself um, have requested uh, can't be accommodated. And um, I think it will, I agree with Councillor Shree, it'll reflect poorly on the Lord Mayor's leadership and character if he's not prepared um, to discuss a simple amendment and to support a simple amendment um, that makes no real impact uh, to the running of council, but reflects um, a genuine desire by myself and Councillor Cassidy um, to be members of committees. And that means participate in vote in, ask questions in, both of council officers directly on citywide issues, which we have no power to do, um, and the chair of those committees, which when you are simply a visitor to committees, you have no um, power to do so. Um, so there is a very big difference from being a member of a committee uh, to being uh, simply an observer at a committee. Um, and I think it's time that the uh, Lord Mayor um, uh, reflected on the decision. Um, he uh, has apologised for not providing the names in advance. Now is the opportunity to correct the mistake um, and to make sure we go forward um, in a more respectful way that reflects the views of the councillors involved in these committees. I'll now put the amendment. All those in favour of the amendment, please say aye and raise your hands. Aye. And those against the amendment, please raise your hands and say no. 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 Thank you. Uh, uh, the, uh, the amendment is lost. Division. Division. Division called by Councillor Shree and Councillor Johnston, please ring the bells. All are in attendance. Clerks, please read the result. Oh, sorry. Uh, excuse me. Please raise your hands and say aye. And hold them there so they may be counted. On the amendment. Thank you. So please hold them there. You're right. Please lower your hands. Those who are against the amendment, please raise your hands now. Thank you. Please lower your hands. Clarks, when you're ready, please read the result. Could you please say that again? There was just, just I just had an issue with the microphone. Could you please say that again? Thank you. The noes have it. Uh, the motion is the amendment is lost. We will now return to the substantive matter before us. Are there any further speakers? There being none, the Lord Mayor. No. 
Uh, I'll now put the resolution about the membership of the Environment Parks and Sustainability Committee. All those in favour, say aye and please raise your hand. Aye. 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 Thank you. And now please lower your hands. And those against, say no and please raise your hand. No. No. Thank you. The ayes have it. Lord Mayor, the Finance, Administration and Small Business Committee, please. Thank you, Mr Chair. I move that the membership of the Finance, Administration and Small Business Committee be as follows. Uh, the Lord Mayor, who shall be a member ex officio, Councillor Adam Allen, Councillor Stephen Wong, Councillor Lisa Atwood, Councillor Angela Owen, Councillor Charles Strunk and Councillor Jonathan Shree and that Councillor Adam Allen and Councillor Stephen Wong be the Chair and Deputy Chair respectively of that committee. Seconded. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the membership of the Finance Administration and Small Business Committee be as read by the Lord Mayor. Uh, it's been provided to you in writing. Um, is there any debate on this resolution, the Lord Mayor? Lord Mayor, have I got you there? Yes, no, no debate. Thank you. Further, further uh, speakers? There being no further speakers, Lord Mayor? No? I will now put the resolution. All those in favour, say aye and raise your hand, please. Aye. 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 Thank you. Please lower your hands. All those against, please say no and raise your hand. No. Thank you. The ayes have it. Lord Mayor, the Infrastructure Committee membership, please. Thank you, Mr Chair. I move that the membership of the Infrastructure Committee be as follows. Uh, the Lord Mayor, who shall be a member ex officio, Councillor David McLaughlin, Councillor Peter Maddock, Councillor Fiona Hammond, Councillor Sarah Hutton, Councillor Steve Griffiths and Councillor Charles Strunk. And that Councillor David McLaughlin and Councillor Peter Maddock be the Chair and Deputy Chair of that committee, respectively. Seconded. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the membership of the Infrastructure Committee be as read by the Lord Mayor and that Councillor McLaughlin and Councillor Maddock be the Chair and Deputy Chair respectively of that committee. Is there any debate on this resolution? The Lord Mayor. No? If further speakers? There being none, the Lord Mayor. No? I will now uh, put the resolution. All those in favour, please say aye and raise your hands. Aye. 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 Thank you. Please lower your hands. All those against, please say no and raise your hand. No. Thank you. The ayes have it. Lord Mayor, the Public and Active Transport Committee, please. Lord Mayor, the membership of the Public and Active Transport Committee. Yes, thanks, Mr Chair. I move that the membership of the Public and Active Transport Committee be as follows. Uh, the Lord Mayor, who shall be a member ex officio, uh, Councillor Ryan Murphy, Councillor Angela Owen, Councillor Stephen Huang, Councillor Greg Adaman, Councillor Jared Cassidy and Councillor Jonathan Shree, and that Councillor Ryan Murphy and Councillor Angela Owen be the Chair and Deputy Chair of, those of that committee respectively. It's been moved by uh, Councillor, uh, excuse me, it's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the membership of the Public and Active Transport Committee be as read by the Lord Mayor with Councillor Ryan Murphy and Councillor Angela Owen be the Chair and Deputy Chair respectively of that committee. Is there any debate, the Lord Mayor? No. Further speakers? There being none, Lord Mayor? No, thanks. I'll now put the resolution. All those in favour say aye and raise your hands. Aye. 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 Thank you. Please lower your hands. Those against, please say no and raise your hand. Thank you, the ayes have it. Lord Mayor, membership tenure of standing committee resolution, please. Mr Chair, I move that the membership tenure of all standing committees be for the full four years of this term of council, unless otherwise decided by a resolution of council or by other means in accordance with the City of Brisbane Act 2010 and local laws. Seconded. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Landers, that the membership tenure of all standing committees be for the full four years of this term of council, unless otherwise decided by resolution of council or by other means in accordance with the City of Brisbane Act 2010 and local laws. Is there any debate on this resolution, Lord Mayor?
Uh, Lord Mayor, would you like to speak to the resolution? Uh, no. Further speakers? Councillor Johnston. Councillor Johnston, your microphone is not on. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm advising the meeting that I have in writing resigned to the CEO of Brisbane City Council um, from the City Planning and Economic Development Committee. Um, I'm disgusted at the Lord Mayor's um, approach to this meeting uh, today. Um, I, I, I find his disregard of the views of his uh, colleagues here at Council um, to be quite appalling. Um, I know there are other councillors that want to serve on this committee. I hope that he takes my resignation um, in the spirit in which it is intended, which is to ensure that uh, Councillor Cassidy uh, can be appointed to the um, uh, can be appointed to the committee, and perhaps Councillor Cassidy will consider resigning from Environment, Parks, and Sustainability Committee. I, 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 I just find. Um, the Lord Mayor's um, dictatorship of this issue without any consideration at all uh, for my feedback um, and that of Councillor Cassidy is to be appalling. Further speakers to the resolution? There being none, Lord Mayor. I will now put the resolution. All those in favour say aye and raise your hands. The resolution being about aye. the tenure of standing committees. Aye. 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 Thank you. Please lower your hands. And those against, please say no and raise your hand. Thank you. The ayes have it. Thank you, councillors. That concludes the business of the day, and I declare the post election meeting closed. Thank you very much. See you later, everyone. Have a good day.